so far, the rivalry has been a spectacle of classic cinema. They beat the unbeatable team. The Texas Longhorns have won it in double overtime. The Trojans win it. With each chapter, the characters may change. When I was a kid, I knew I wanted to come to the University of Texas. Growing up in Austin, that's all I knew. When you grow up in Southern California, everybody watches USC football. But the basic dramatic elements remain. In Texas football, it's a religion. It's something that is ingrained in every young player's heart. And when you come here and you see all the Heisman Trophy winners and all the greats that came before, it really means something to you that you're now fighting the same fight that they fought. Two opposing programs who breathe the same passion. Himself up the, middle. Going wild here. the sequel to the sequel. The rematch of the rematch. In the stands. Grab a seat. The show is about to start. You are looking live at Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. And already, folks, this feels like a matchup between two heavyweight fighters. The University of Texas Longhorns take the field as they prepare to take on the USC Trojans out of the Pac-12. Hi, everybody. Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joel Klatt. And welcome to Austin, Texas. And partner, already, I know it's only week three in yep. the college football season, but you get the feeling that Clay Helton from USC mm -hmm. and Coach Herbert from Texas they're already under immense pressure for their job. They are. I mean, this is a pressure-packed game. There's no doubt. You start with Clay Helton at USC. I think he's underappreciated for SC. You look at his first two full seasons as head coach. He won 21 games. That's more games won than any other USC coach in their first two seasons. He also won a Rose Bowl and a Pac-12 championship. First time that's been done since 2008, that Pete Carroll era. Now let's move over to Texas. Tom Herman a couple of years ago was the hottest name in coaching. Texas brought him in and it's been a lot of stop and start eight and seven through for his first 15 games he's desperate for a marquee win I'd say this is a marquee stage let's see if he can get it tonight well both these coaches if they are under pressure for their jobs will have to rely on babies to lead the way. <laughs> hey, you ain't lying. I mean, hey, JT Daniels from USC, the quarterback, he literally should be in high school. He reclassified, and that's why he's at USC a year early. So instead of playing in front of 10,000 people on a Friday night, he's in front of 100,000 people on a Saturday night network television across America playing against the University of Texas. Sam Ellinger on the other side, the sophomore quarterback from Texas. He had a bit of a coming out party in this game a year ago, but now he needs that marquee win along with his head coach. We'll see if he can pull it off against the Trojans. Time now for Progressive Insurance pre-kick flow. This is a series that dates back to 1955. USC leads it 5-1, to one, the most celebrated of which was the BCS championship game in the 2006 Rose Bowl. Coming up, Texas SC on Fox. Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Daryl K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, 100,000 strong in attendance to watch SC take on the University of Texas. And moments ago, our Jenny Taft, the All-American girl, had a chance to catch up with Coach Herman. Well, Coach, we've got two teams with plenty of history, but finally this one in your house. What was the last thing you said to your guys before coming out here? Cut it loose. Don't, don't leave anything uh, left behind. And push all your chips in and uh, play for the guy next to you. And last year, your quarterback, Sam Ellinger, he was the rookie on the road, and now the roles are reversed. It's JT Daniels as the 18-year-old. How do you disrupt him early? Well, we got to bring pressure, but we got to be smart with it too, because we can't leave our secondary 
uh, completely on islands all, all game long because he's too good. The receivers are too good. Their whole line's too good. But we definitely want to disrupt him, that's for sure. Good luck to you. Thank you. Guys. Texas won the toss deferred. USC will receive perfect weather for college football. 78 degrees at kickoff time for the Trojans and the Longhorns. Cameron Dicker will send it away. Velas Jones and Stephen Carr are back, and this one kicked out of the end zone for a touchback. So that brings on young JT Daniels, true freshman out of modern day high school. He's from Irvine, California. And this guy started on the road last week at Stanford, but hey, all road environments are not created equal. This is much more difficult. He's got to play better in the scoring area. Last week against Stanford, 0 of 6 throwing the football once they crossed the 40 yard line, including an interception. That was really the difference in that game. We'll see if he can execute in this hostile environment. USC lost at Stanford 70, 17 to 3 last Saturday. First and 10 at the 25. Aka Cedric Ware, number 28. And they give it on the end of round. It's Jones looking for running room, and he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage because Caden Stern, the freshman, is there to chop him down. It looks like there's a flag on the play as well. We got our man referee in tonight, Joe. Where's the weight room? There he is. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 28. The foul occurred behind the line of scrimmage. It's a 10 yard penalty, replay first down. You're going to see 28. That's Aka Cedric Ware. And there's the block in the back right there. And there was really nowhere for Velas Jones to go. So ill advised block from the senior from DeSoto, Texas. You wonder if his emotions are a little too high coming back to his home state to play the Longhorns. So first down at 20. At the 15 for Southern California, where remains in the backfield. Daniels to throw for the first time, drops it off to where he drops the football incomplete. So USC a little shaky to start this game. Yeah, and really it's just their running back, and Ware had a lot of room to run. The blocks were set up. If he catches this ball, and it was put right on his face, perfect throw from JT Daniels. He's going to get that edge and at least gain 10, probably pick up the first down with a full 20 yards. JT Daniels, just the second true freshman to start a season opener for USC, joining Matt Barkley in 2009. Second and 20 at the 15. Daniels with time delivers and caught on the far side. It's Jones who went up high to get it with a defender right in front of him. I mean, what a throw and the concentration. What's the concentration? Because I believe this is Josh Thompson, number 29. He's right there. His hands are basically on the football, and Jones is able to still bring it in. What a confident throw right there. Bringing up a much more manageable situation here on third down. A gain of 17, third down and three at the 32. JT Daniels will throw it for the first down underneath. Lunging forward is Amon Ross St. Brown, a true freshman that played with Daniels in modern day high school. And they're really high on him, feeling that he could be the next great receiver. He's a tremendous talent. And the timing and anticipation that the two have together is born from thousands and thousands of hours of working together through high school and now coming here to USC and it comes to fruition there for a first down. His offensive coordinator T. Martin compares him to the great Lynn Swan, their athletic director as Carr tries to get outside. Terrific pursuit by the Texas defense as they chop him down. Jones and Johnson combining on the play. Yeah, and, and a, another great effort in there, number 90, Charles Omenahu, who didn't make the tackle but really set the edge. And that's why Carr had nowhere to go but to just string that out towards the far side and the pursuit was able to catch up with him. Opening drive of the game for Southern California. Second and 13 at the 32. Empty backfield for JT Daniels. The freshman throws near side and it's Carr. Carr. And Stephen Carr will get up field and gained four on the play. Chris Boyd, who some feel is one of the best corners in America, comes up with the tackle. 
Well, these are the situations that you desperately want to avoid. Long yardage situations for a conversion, and Clay Helton knows that he's not going to be all that successful today if they're in this situation all night long. They were able to convert the last time they were had a third down. Where do they go here? Third down nine to the 36. And a timeout called by UT. Twelve twenty-seven to play in the first quarter. Texas calls a timeout. They didn't like what they saw on the other side. Coming up, the third down for the Trojans. Fox College football presented by Ram Trucks is sponsored by Wendy's, the official hamburger of NCAA football. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Yeah, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who is a University of Texas alum, hosted a tailgate party this afternoon at the governor's mansion. Now, ironically, his daughter, Audrey, is a student at USC. Can't believe the Texas governor didn't take advantage of in-state tuition. <laughs> right. Spending all that money. Right. Third down and nine at the 36. Malapai checks in at running back. Daniels. Standing strong in the pocket, delivers St. Brown down the sideline, and he gets out of bounds. After picking up the first down, Josh Thompson there to usher him out. But I'm on Ron St. Brown with a gain of 29. Yeah, he, he plays like a veteran, and it was just the patience in the route. He allowed the defense to kind of settle back, settle into their zone, and then he just struck away to the outside. And I thought JT Daniels did a great job of being patient in the pocket, allowing that concept to develop before he hit his other freshman wide receiver for a first down. First down and 10 at the 35, opening drive for USC. Play fake. Daniels throws on the move. Drops it off. Tyler Petit. And he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Well defended. Devontae Davis came up and made the tackle. Hard hit there. And this is exactly where USC found themselves all night against Stanford last week. And really, when they reached the opponent's 40 yard line, they have not been very good. Points per trip inside the 40, they're 113th in the country. Touchdown percentage, they're 119th. Let's see how they can execute here. Trojans drove to at least the Stanford 46 times and ended up with just a field goal. Daniel steps up in the pocket now. Throws on the run, and it's caught. Looks like it could be a first down. Tyler Vaughns with the reception. And the nice run after the catch, and it is a first down. Well, check this out. You're going to get pressure on the outside from the corner and the outside linebacker, and Daniel steps up inside of that pressure, and then he's able to find his veteran wide receiver, Tyler Vaughns, on the sideline. Excellent job by this quarterback. This stage, Gus, so far does not seem too big for JT Daniels. He's played patient and under control. First down at the 23. And they'll hand it off. Carr. Jitterbug into the hole. It free touchdown USC 23 yards and the Trojans strike first. What an incredible block by Tyler Petit, the tight end. He's going to come right in right here, and then he's going to throw the defensive into the ground. You probably could call him for holding there. Tackle works up to the linebacker, and then Carr splits everybody and heads to the end zone. And that was their senior captain, Breckett Hager, who Petit threw to the ground. McGrath, extra point. He was the hero last year in this game. So USC on their opening drive. The Trojans go. 75 yards on nine plays. They eat up 412. USC up 7 0. Back to August. Well, the celebrities come out to watch USC Texas. Mo Bamba, sixth overall pick by the Orlando Magic. Malik Jefferson, third round selection by the Bengals. Mark Sanchez had a great career in the NFL. Brian Cushing as well. And then there's the heater right there, Roger Clements. And what would you say, Joel, about that guy? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and VY, Vince Young, who just went into the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. They honored him during the break. Now on to the field for Texas. Their starting quarterback, Sam Ellinger from Austin. He's a sophomore, getting better and better. Had a great, efficient game last week, Joel, against Tulsa. And last year in this game, he maybe played his best.
best game of his career 298 yards two touchdowns but they made too many mistakes late in that game and when we talked to him yesterday that's what he said he wanted to correct we wanted to get to that position so that we can make the plays necessary to win the game he was 21 of 27 last week against Tulsa 78 percent that's a career best for 237 on first down a flag on the play Trey Watson the Caltrans for a running and Malik Dorton right there to bring him down for a loss but there is a flag. I thought USC got a little bit of a quick start there. Offside. Defense number 44 in the neutral zone for snap. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And it was Dorton who you mentioned, Gus, and he just got a little quick. Into the neutral zone. That's why he was in the backfield so quickly. You know, this offensive line for Texas has struggled this year, and that's one area where USC feels like they have an advantage. And something tells me these defensive line are going to be amped up to try to get in the backfield all night long. So first down and five of the 30. Opening series for the University of Texas. High snap. Ellinger handles it. Delivers. Oh, he throws strike at the 45. Guess who? Colin Johnson, who had the game of his life one season ago in L.A. against the Trojans. Happiest guy to see Gus Johnson? Colin Johnson, because he balled out last year against USC. Nice little route across the field. Good ball from Sam Ellinger up high. Game 15. Here's Ellinger. We'll throw it again underneath, and he has his receiver. Colin Johnson again. Remember, last year against SC, he burned the Trojans. Seven catches for a career high, 191. He really never got going after that to that extent and they try to target him here early. Now hand it off Watson getting through the hole and they say this offensive line their major problem when we spoke to coach Beck yesterday is that they're not moving people. Yep movement in particular with the double teams they want to use this tempo to try to help their offensive line. Watson running and he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. As Cameron Smith, Tui Pelotu combining on the stop. And that was the ex example, Gus, of that. They just got no movement on the defensive tackles, and they were right there for the stop. Third down and three at the 28. Ellinger runs to the right, looking for the first down, cuts it up, and picks up the first down. Here's a young man that was ranked as one of the top dual threat quarterbacks coming out of high school. Yeah, and Sam Ellinger, you know that he's a big guy. He's about 230 pounds, and he can take the pounding in between the tackles and on those little design power sweeps on the outside. They were very successful with that last year against USC, and they're trying to work the edges here tonight. When he came into our meeting yesterday, I didn't realize that he is a big, big man. Yeah, dude. Sam is thick, man. He came in there and... Looked you right in the eyes, squeezed your hand, and said, yes, sir, no, sir. He is all business. All of 6-3, first down at the 23-yard line. Opening series for Texas. Here's Ellinger with a man in his face, incomplete. That one thrown a little bit high. Johnson, the intended receiver. Greg Johnson covering. Ellinger had pressure right in his face. Christian Rector, he's going to kind of cut him up, and he's going to be right in the face of Sam Ellinger when he's ready to throw this ball. A little bit on a delay, kind of waited until he diagnosed the play, and then went upfield and was right Ellinger's chest. Second down and 10 to the 23. Play fake. Ellinger sprints out of the pocket, throws on the move, and it's incomplete. That one intended for Devin Duvernay, who had a nice touchdown week one against Maryland really laid out and yeah. made a big time grab. Yeah, I mean, they got some talent on the outside, but I gotta tell you, you know, I've seen this two weeks in a row now from Texas. They have these little design sprint outs to the left. For a right-handed quarterback to sprint to the left on a design play and try to throw the ball, that's the hardest throw that a quarterback can possibly make. Not in love with those play calls. Third down and 10 of the 23. Empty backfield for Ellinger. They'll throw it. Quick strike underneath, and it's caught. First down. Beck gets deep into USC territory inside the 10. A 15-yard gain on third and 10. And now the Longhorns have it first down and goal at the 8-yard line. USC blitzed both linebackers, vacated the middle of the field. Great throw from Ellinger there for a first. First down and goal of the 8. Looks like that ball may have come loose late. That might be why the officials are stopping it now. 
the previous play is under further review. You know, I got a good look at this, and it did come loose, but Beck is going to get hit. Watch it at the end of this play. Beck goes in, kind of delivers the hit, but watch his forearm, his left forearm, all the way on the ground before that ball comes loose. That's when it comes loose. I, I believe that this is going to be Texas ball. Don't fault him here for stopping it because there was, but see, watch this. He's under, under control. That's a wrist, then the forearm and elbow. Beck is down there before the ball comes out. Beck is a senior from Tampa. Fifth year tight end. And he missed the 2017 season with a foot injury, but he's on the Mackey Award watch list. Well, he's played in 38 career games, even though he had a red shirt last season. Gus, he's got those 17 starts like you talked about. And also earlier in his career actually After moved from linebacker. Review, the receiver, the runner's right elbow was down with possession. The room on the field was confirmed. First down. And our replay official Jack McDonald with the stoppage. Both the on-field officials tonight as well as the replay booth, Gus, are from the Big 12. So this crew is used to working together, in particular on a big stage. That can be very important. First down to go to the eight-yard line. Opening series for Texas. This drive started at the 25. Trey Watson in the backfield. Ellinger. Here's the fake reverse. Ellinger now reverses his field. And will slide down about a half yard in front of the line of scrimmage. Malik Dorton with the tackle. A really nice job by C.J. Pollard. Didn't make the tackle. He's not going to show up in the statistics, but he's the one that did not bite on that reverse. And then even when Ellinger tried to go back all the way to his right, he was waiting right there, and there was nowhere for Ellinger to go. Gain of one, second down and goal of the seven. Ellinger sprints out to his right, throws on the move, and he has his man inside the five-yard line. That's little Jordan Humphrey. The junior from South Lake, Texas. They had trouble here against Tulsa. Same into the field, inside the five. They tried to sprint out to the left on fourth down and did not get it against Tulsa. Where do they go here on third down? Something tells me they're headed to Colin Johnson. Remember, he's got the huge frame, the big matchup nightmare for USC. Colin Johnson, remember, he's six foot six inches. USC takes his first time out of the half. And the Trojans will take some time. 30 second timeout. So SC losing to Stanford last week, Texas losing their season opener at Nolan. And while waiting, let's go to Los Angeles and Greg Wolf for a game break. All right, Gus, thanks. TCU, they get Texas next week in a Big 12 opener, but they've got their hands full of number four Ohio State right now. Nick Bosa rips it away from Sean Robinson. Devon Hamilton recovers for the touchdown. The Buckeyes lead TCU 10 to nothing first quarter. Gosh, Joel, back to you. Tell you what, Joel, this Dwayne Haskins is proving early that he's the real deal. I mean, that whole team, Bose is the real deal. I mean, he's already got three sacks, now four if you include that. That's kind of a strip sack right there. He had two fumble recoveries, one for a touchdown. Haskins, nine touchdowns, one interception. They're second in the country in total offense, scoring offense. Tom Herman knows full well how powerful the Buckeyes can be. He was the OC for their national championship. Third down and goal to the three-yard line. Ellinger pulls it out. Can he get to the corner? Oh, what a nice open field tackle. Marvell Tell brought him down. If not, Sam Ellinger would have had a touchdown. I got to tell you, this is just an unbelievable play. First of all, you're going to get number seven. He's going to be just waiting, waiting, and then watch how he just gets out to the outside and then goes right after the legs of the quarterback, takes him away, and gets the big quarterback 230 pounds to the ground. So Cameron Dicker comes in. He's a freshman from Austin. He has not attempted a field goal yet from 20 yards away. And it's a good sign. Great start for the young man. Texas will settle for three points. First quarter, seven to three. SC.
This year marks the beginning of a new tradition with a pregame street party on the newly named Bevo Boulevard. Fans get to greet Bevo and give the team a spark of confidence prior to entering the stadium. The look of confidence sponsored by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. I saw Bevo dragging around his guys, his handlers. <laughs> today. So they, they actually let Be Bevo kind of walk the team out now. He used to just sit over there in the corner. Now he's more active. And this one kicked out of the end zone. This week on Thursday Night Football, Sam Darnold and the Jets take on the Browns exclusively on the NFL Network. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Aaron Andrews, Christina Pink will have the call for you. And starting in week four, Fox becomes the new network home to Thursday Night Football when the Vikings battle the Rams. Sam Darnold. Starting quarterback, third overall pick out of USC. Rookie. Didn't do a bad job last week against my Lions. Ice in his veins, man. Pick six to start his career, and he just came back. Bang, 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 bang. I mean, I love watching that dude. Special talent. First and ten of the 25. Daniel six for seven to start. They throw it to Pittman. Pittman gets his shoulder squared, and he'll pick up about seven, maybe more on the play. Brandon Jones. Brings him to the turf. I've talked about this environment and wondering how JT Daniels, the 18-year-old, was going to react in this big environment. 100,000 people, six of seven to start. Now he's seven of eight, and the only incompletion was right off Aka Cedric West's face mask. I mean, he has been lights out. Daniels throwing on the move again, and it's incomplete. Had his man, but Devontae Davis knocked that ball out of Trayvon Sidney's hands. Devontae Davis, he's a big corner, 6'2". And playing opposite Chris Boyd, he gets a lot of attention, Joel. He's a senior from Miami, 205 pounds, so not just the length, but also that physical frame to go with it. Back in this third down, remember, they've gone to Amon Ross St. Brown for a couple of big third downs already. Third and three of the 32. Where in motion out of the backfield. Daniels underneath, caught, and a first down. Amon Ross St. Brown, partner, you called it. And JT Daniels put it on him. I, I'm just so impressed with these two true freshmen. Again, they've played a lot of football together. But as he comes off of the ball, he just kind of slow plays it, slow plays it, and then he puts his foot in the ground and he moves to the inside because he doesn't sprint to the inside because there's a linebacker there. He just softly fills the void. Daniels knows how he's going to exit that route, and he puts it right on his frame. That's just an excellent job on a third down. So far, St. Brown, three catches, 43 yards. He gained 11 there. Daniels winds up, pulls it down, winds up, and out of bounds. That ball intended for Tyler Vaughn. You know, Sam Darnold, still close to this USC program, he had some advice for the young quarterback. Jenny, what did he say? Well, guys, if anyone can give JT Daniels advice on how to fill his shoes, it is Sam Darnold. I talked to him just before the game. He told me three specific things. He told JT, be yourself. Don't do too much. Let the game come to you. Hey, guys, we are seeing that so far. Second down and 10 of the 43. Ball's in motion. Here's a screen. And it's read perfectly. Stephen Carr dropped immediately by Gary Johnson and P.J. Locke. Check out how Gary Johnson, here's Gary Johnson first of all, and then he's just going to slow play this. He reads it beautiful. He's right here, he's right here. Now he's going to take off, and he gets into the backfield and makes the tackle on the screen pass. Excellent job right there from the senior from Alabama. That's a loss of three on the play. Third down and 13 at the 40. Where Malapaya in the split backfield next to Daniels. Daniels to the sideline off his back foot incomplete. Michael Pittman the intended receiver and SC will be forced to punt it away. Good series there from Texas and for the offense was able to go down and get some points on the board answer that score from the Trojans and Texas is able to get off the field. Chris Tilby from Melbourne Australia comes in to punt it away. Deshaun Jameson is the deep man. Tilby did not play in 2017. And 
the fair catch is made at the 15-yard line, a 44-yard punt. So coming up, Sam Ellinger ready to lead this Texas offense down 7-3. Fox College football is sponsored by Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you. And by the all-new, totally remixed Volkswagen Jetta. Welcome back. USC on top of Texas, 7-3. Longhorns with the football now, first down and 10 at their own 16-yard line. Trey Watson in the backfield. False start, I thought, on that right tackle, but they're going to discuss if he was drawn off. False start, offense, number 52, five yard penalty, first down. Sam Cosme, fullback as well, but right over there on the outside. Yeah, you got both of them kind of leaning. And now Cosby's playing right tackle because Elijah Rodriguez has had to go down to center from his right guard spot and Derek Kerstetter has gone down to guard because Zach Shackelford the starting center is banged up. First down to 15 at the 11. Gallagher handing it off. Watson looking for a crease. A couple couple before being taken down from behind by Cameron Smith. Let's see if Texas tries to get into some tempo here. Normally it doesn't happen until you grab a first down, but that's where they were successful in their first series. Second down and 12 after the three-yard game. Ellinger standing strong in the pocket, delivers to Colin Johnson, turns it up, and crosses the 20 up to the 22-yard line. Jordan Eosefa with the tackle for SC. Eight yard game and Colin Johnson clearly a huge part of this game plan here tonight. Ironically Colin Johnson from Texas. But he's originally from Los Angeles three catches 43 yards third down and four. Ellinger delivers and that ball knocked down at the line of scrimmage nicely done by John Houston. This was a problem for Texas in last year's game. Last year it was Uchina Nwosu, who has since departed from USC. There's Houston from his linebacker spot on the blitz. Couldn't get there, got himself up in the air. Tom Herman knew that they had it open behind him. If that ball gets over Houston, it's probably a completion for a first down. Ryan Buczewski will come in to punt it away. He's another Aussie punter. Standing inside his own 10, Tyler Vaughn is the deep man. This will kick toward the far sideline and out of bounds. And SC will have great field position. Let's go to Greg Wolf in Los Angeles. Gus, thanks. Back to AT&T Stadium. Top 20 battle between Ohio State and TCU. Shewo Olana Lua gets the Horned Frogs on the board. Six yard touchdown run. Ohio State still leads TCU 10-7 into the first. Gus, Joel, back to you. All right, Greg, thank you very much. I think Gary Patterson, the head coach of TCU, is one of the most unheralded and underappreciated superstar coaches in all of college football. Well, he's, all, he's, he's got a statue. It's only three guys that have a statue. Only three? Say Bob Stoops. No, he's not coaching anymore. Here's Daniels, rolls out, drops it off, has his man. And that's Josh Fallow picks it up and he gains six. But you're right, you're right. Gary does an unbelievable job with TCU. And in this state, as much as Longhorn fans won't like to hear it, he's run this state for quite a while now. TCU has been the best program in this state for six, seven, eight years. Uh, really, since Gary became the head coach over that in entire tenure, I and mean, you take a look at the records and they're on top. Second down at five. At the 48 yard line for young JT Daniels. He's a true freshman. Play fit. Underneath, and is it caught? Yes, it is. The reception made by Valus Jones. Now, there's been a lot put on the shoulder of the young quarterback here early. They have thrown a lot of passes. I wonder if they're going to try to now start to hammer away at the middle of this Texas defense. They'll hand it off. Carr breaks it back and picks up the first. I thought. 
JT Daniels was interesting when he was asked about the loss last week to Stanford. I didn't do my part. The biggest blame goes on me. Age is not an excuse and neither is experience. Coach put me in as the starter and I had to get the job done and I didn't get it done that night. Mostly in the scoring area, including there was a big change of momentum. A close game, he fumbled right before the half. Stanford went down and took a two touchdown lead. That was really the difference. Daniels scrambling now, in trouble. And wisely, he just throws it out of bounds. Malcolm Roach, P.J. Locke with pressure. I I'm surprised by the game plan a little bit. I thought that there would be more of a mix so far. And I know it's early, but more of a mix from Clay Helton's club of run and pass on first down to try to help out the young quarterback, get into more manageable situations. They've already thrown 16 passes and only three runs in this ball game. Pretty remarkable for a kid that's 18 years old. Second and ten at the 43. Daniels airs it out down the sideline. Jones has it inside the five. What a throw! And an even better catch. Felix Jones has USC in business. A 40-yard completion. He throws such a pretty deep ball, and this was on the money, right out in front. He'll run it with Carr. He stood up in the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Chris Nelson, as well as Brandon Jones, in on the play. Boy, that was a pretty deep ball, wasn't it? I yes, mean, it the, the arc on it, you can just tell when someone understands how to throw the ball down the field. JT Daniels certainly knows how to do that. Already 12 of 17 for 129 yards here on the road. Second down and goal at the three yard line for Southern California. JT Daniels sprints out, squares, fires, and incomplete. Amon Ross A. Brown couldn't snare it. That one thrown to Tad High. And that's an impossible throw. I'm, I'm just telling you, that is a one out of ten throw. Rolling to the left and then asked to throw with a little bit of touch. Because, see, this is not just to the back corner of the end zone. He's got to try to throw with touch down to the frame of the wide receiver, sprinting to his left. Nearly impossible right there for the quarterback, JT Daniels. Nauman Ra did not have a shot at that pass. Student section rocking here in Austin. Third and goal at the three. Malapaya checks in at running back. They give it to him. Tries to get to the corner and does. Dives. Touchdown, SC. Vavai Malapaya. And USC takes a 13 to 3 lead. And this was just a foot race. We'll see if he got himself in. Yeah, look at that turn. You see how he turned and kept himself off of the ground while well, that ball hits the plane of the goal line. What a run there. Good effort. Some willpower to get in the end zone. And Southern California on the road taking a 14-3 lead with 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. Back to Austin right after this. USC with a 14 to 3 lead over Texas here in the first quarter aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm beautiful night here in Austin. As USC made the trip to Los Angeles after the loss last week to Stanford. They opened up with a win against UNLV and what a difference for them executing in the scoring area. Now both drives, Gus, that went inside the 40, they were able to punch into the end zone for 14 points. Huge difference. And Stathouse kicks it off. And this one out of the end zone once again. Families affected by Hurricane Florence urgently need support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to these families. Donate today by going to redcross.org or text Florence to 90999. That's 90999 to give $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Relief. 
Well, we didn't see any tempo on that second series from Texas after it worked so well on their first series, diving down, driving down, and getting some points. Let's see if Sam Ellinger and the Longhorns try to increase that tempo and get USC on heels. Play clock winding down. I don't think they're going to get it off the time, and they don't. And this is a huge difference this year. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. This is a huge difference this year is that after that kickoff, they're just rolling the 40 second clock. You know, it's like just between first and second down. It's not a 25 second clock after everything gets set. And we've seen this across college football throughout the early part of the season. Offense is not ready to go. The first down at 15 from the 20. Watson. And he pushes the pile forward as Cameron Smith makes the tackle. See if they try to run a play. Five yard gain. Deliberate. That first series, they were moving, weren't they? Yes, and they had were. some momentum and rhythm in their offense. And different story right now, but for Clay Helton, his team looks strong. At the end of the first quarter, SC with a 14 to 3 lead over Texas. Fox College football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Jenny Tab, Mike Pereira, our rules analyst is with us as well in Los Angeles. So Texas seems like their offense is stalling a bit after a very positive opening series. Second and 10 of the 25 for Ellinger. Here's Elliger with the quarterback run. And he'll go nowhere. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Christian Rector read it and made the play. Well, no movement from that offensive line. That's the theme of the year so far for Texas. And they're trying to pull some offensive linemen around. But in order to pull guys around and open up a hole, you've got to get movement out of the down linemen. They're just unable to get it. No gain. Third down and 10 of the 25. Ellinger will throw it this time. Rolls out of the pocket. Looking. Oh, he put it on the money. What a throw. Lil Jordan with the catch. A gain of 22. Nice throw by Sam Ellinger. Cam Smith, the middle linebacker, was chasing him right on his heels as well as Porter Gustin. Full speed, full tilt, right on the money to Lil Jordan Humphrey. What an excellent throw from Ellinger. 22 yard gain. First down to the 48. Ellinger to throw again. Rips one up the sideline. And incomplete. Intended for Gerard Hurd, but broken up by Levi Jones. Pretty good throw there. Make that Isaiah Langley. And Isaiah Langley, some really good coverage on the former quarterback, turn wide receiver. Gerard Hurd, the senior from Denton, Texas. Langley, he rotates with a redshirt freshman named Greg Johnson, so it's his series to go, and he's making a play. Second down and 10 to the 48. They hand it off to Watson, running near side this time. And Watson falling forward. Cameron Smith with the tackle after a six yard pickup. Time now for Proven to Last, sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. Cam Smith is built to serve. This guy has been so good over the course of his career. 37 starts, 296 tackles in his career at USC. Could have gone to the NFL, came back. He said he wants to be an All-American. Third down and four. Ellinger. First down. Well, Jordan turns it up at the 30. 20. Little Jordan. Touchdown, Texas. 48 yards.
Just a nice, nice little simple out route from little Jordan Humphrey. And as he breaks on the outside of Jane Harris, the nickelback, he just totally whiffs on the tackle. Humphrey's able to get the sideline and take it all the way in for an easy touchdown for Texas. He may have whiffed because little Jordan Humphrey is 6'5", 225. He's a big guy. Not so low. Extra point is good. Texas starting to get their swagger back now. They get it to the skill guys, little Jordan Humphrey. And the Longhorns score. 14-10. Wendy's has been giving out free Dave singles on campus all weekend long to hungry fans at their food truck and with the Wendy's DoorDash door. Get Wendy's delivered to your front door with DoorDash with no delivery fee on weekends all season long. Thanks to Wendy's, your game day meal is covered. Little Jordan Humphrey, team's leading receiver by nearly a two to one margin over Colin Johnson. He's coming off a career best seven catch 109 yard game against Tulsa that included a 40 yard touchdown. Humphreys now three catches 74 yards and a touchdown as he'll get a shot Jones. It's a sideline and Jones finally out of bounds at the 40 but getting back to little Jordan Humphrey you just wonder little Jordan that's an interesting first name for more. Here's Jenny Tab. Well, Gus, it is a special name, but really the name is a contradiction. You mentioned it. He's 6'4", 220, and he's not little. The story is his older brother wanted mom to name him Michael for Michael Jordan. So as a compromise, she went with little Jordan. He started playing football at four. This has always been the dream. Coach Herman calls him his Swiss Army knife because what can he do? And he is little Jordan, but he's also goes by LJ to teammates. Not so little Jordan. <laughs> He's a big guy. Hey, man, what a play he just made, too. You know, keeping his feet and then getting into the end zone, bringing him right back in this game. Texas showing blitz. Daniels rolls out of the pocket, throws a strike to Vaughns, but incomplete. I think there was a flag on the other side of the field. I, I don't think that. False start. Offense, number 70. Five yard penalty. First down. They got the right tackle, Chuma Adoga. And as Gary Johnson, the middle linebacker, 33, watches, he kind of comes up right to the line of scrimmage. And you see that right tackle, he just moved ever so slightly. And that play was blown dead before Daniels could get the ball out of his hand. So they'll back it up five yards, first down at 15 of the 34. Like Cedric Ware, number 28 in the backfield, JT Daniels. Here's Daniels up the sideline. Looks like it's intercepted, and it is. Chris Boyd, we told you, he's one of the best DBs in America. Preseason all Big 12. Ill-advised throw from JT Daniels. He kind of pump fakes, and then off his back foot, he kind of tries to lob it to his freshman wide receiver. But here's the hard part. Boyd doesn't have deep responsibility on this play because he's got a safety behind him. That's why he was squatting, looking at the quarterback with nowhere to go. Almost impossible to complete that pass. Gus, that's what's called a jam corner. He's got no other responsibility other than get his hands on the wide receiver and then sit for a short route. So he gets his hands on the wide receiver, waits for the ball, and boom, it's right in his hands. Great play by Boyd. Ill-advised throw from JT Daniels. So Texas gets it first down at their own 49. Boyd will be a Sunday player and we're going to watch him take a look at this play to determine if the interception will stand. Well I think that they're, they're going to look and see if the ball is actually controlled by a player that is in bounds. You see, if that ball is loose and touching a player that is out of bounds, then it would be an incomplete pass. Boy, that's going to be awful hard to overturn because it looks like St. Brown's in bounds. Now let's join our rules analyst, Mike Pereira, in Los Angeles. Mike, fix your tie. It's a little crooked. You're usually the most badly <laughs> attired man in all of college sports. What do you think about this? 
Well, I'll tell you that you're exactly right, Joel. You know, if it does touch, if, it's, if the USC player is out of bounds touching the loose ball, then it would be reversed. After but he gets possession review, before that. The ruling on the field stands first down. That's a, that's a really nice so really, call by the to official. Me, yeah, to me, that was a really good stop because you could see it come loose. But then really great play by the defender who got possession of the ball really pretty quickly, too. So really excellent call. All right, Mike, thank you very much. We'll be joining you later. First down and 10 at the 49-yard line for Texas. Down 14 to 10. Got to capitalize on mistakes from the opponent in big games. Watson gets outside. Watson falling forward close to the first down. Iman Marshall with the tackle. Well, you're going to see the guard. He's going to pull all the way around. And Watson, he's just going to follow him. See how he gets on his hip, reads the block. He got the hook of the defender. And so Watson kicks it outside. He takes it towards the first down. Nine yard gain, second and one of the 42. And then run the reverse. Hurd looks backside. Ellinger gets a block. First down. Sam Ellinger down at the 30. Okay, Texas. Cameron Smith with the tackle, but some razzle dazzle going on here in the Lone Star State. Oh, I like that razzle dazzle. And Christian Rector had it all sniffed out the defensive end. He just didn't make the tackle on Ellinger. He shows the elusiveness. Back in the backfield to pick up po positive yardage. A gain of 11, first down at the 31. Ellinger. Steps up, runs it. And he'll gain a couple. Malik Dorton tracking him down from behind. Really, it was a clean pocket. There wasn't much pressure. I think he saw a seam, and that's what he took off for because really there was no Trojan within striking distance of Sam. Second down and nine to the 30 yard line. Hand off to Watson. And Watson wrestled down from behind by Porter Gustin. Now, this is what happens when that defensive end, Gustin, he's able to just squeeze, squeeze, see, watch 45, and then once he sees Ellinger make the decision to give the handoff to Watson, that's when he goes ahead and commits fully towards the running back. Third down eight at the 29 yard line. Empty backfield for Sam Ellinger. Here's Ellinger over the middle. Incomplete. Colin Johnson hit hard by Marvell Tell and that dislodges the football and that brings up fourth down and I thought he took his eyes off it as if he was wanting to run after the catch or he was wondering which way he wanted to spin to get away from Marvell Tell because that ball seemed to be coming loose right at the same time that the senior safety Tell was inching up closer for contact so Cameron Dicker who made his first attempt in the first quarter, 20 yards. This one, though, much more challenging from 46 yards away. Ooh, he put a beautiful draw on that one. Jordan Spieth would love it. Bam! Freshman, 14-13. Longhorns down by a penny. Fox College Football presented by Ram Trucks is sponsored by Jeep. Get a great deal at the Jeep Adventure Days event. 14-13, Trojans on top of the Longhorns here in the second quarter. Don't forget, folks, check out my main man, Joel Clapp, breaking the huddle on Facebook Live Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Who are you going to make mad this week? <laughs> Why You're always Why saying something. I mean, I just thought. Yeah, I got to clean up your mess. Well, you know. <laughs> that's what the partners got to do, right? Yeah, that's what I got to do, little brother. We're Foxhole guys. 14 13, one point game. Jones, Carhartt, Deepman. As Dicker sends it away. 
And as he's, Davis Jones will bring it out. And he gets to the 22 yard line before being stopped. JT Daniels, last time he had the ball, he threw a pick. Yeah, and, and you got to shake it off. That's what Darnold was so good at, right? He, he turned the ball over too much in college, and that was well documented on his way to the National Football League. But JT Daniels, this, this is when you got to prove your medal to your teammates. You just made a mistake. Come out in that, that ne next series and answer the bell. Ten straight points for Texas. First down for SC. At their own 21, here comes a blitz. They hand it off. Malapai. And Malapai wrestled down Anthony Wheeler. And Jeffrey McCullough both combining on the tackle. Well, this run defense has just not been what it was a year ago, but they're getting better. And some of these senior linebackers like Anthony Will Wheeler and Gary Johnson. They're taking it upon themselves. They want to fix these run statistics. Second and eight into 23. Daniels to the sideline. Caught. Vaughn's first down. Trojans. Devontae Davis covering. But that's a gain of 16 yards. And I love the decision from JT Daniels because he's got soft coverage out to that wide side of the field. It makes it an easy one-on-one -on -one completion. Daniels fires it out there, gets a new set of da downs. Excellent job there from the young quarterback. First down to the 39. Ware serves as the pistol back. They give it to him. Where with running room and it crash forward and get to the 45 Davis again defensively. But I mean, Joel, JT Daniels, true freshman. How much pressure is it on a kid to not only come in and start as a freshman, but to come in and start at USC yeah. as a true freshman? I, I can't even imagine. I, I really can't. And he said, listen, he knew when he was nine years old that this is what he wanted to do. He reclassified because he knew he was ready for this moment, and he hasn't shied away tonight. Second down to four to 45. Daniels down the field. And incomplete. Michael Pittman, closest Trojan to the football. Daniels throwing that in the double coverage. Well, I tell you what, Chris Boyd is having himself a night. Watch number two. Just an excellent job of once he realizes it's a deep route, he cuts off the receiver, turns his head, and basically just box him out. I mean, that's just excellent coverage right there. Boyd having himself a night, the senior from Gilmore, Texas. He does have an interception, third and four to 45. Chris Boyd, senior, trying to get paid next year. Daniels. Underneath, caught first down Trojans. Guess where they went? Amon Ross St. Brown. I'll tell you what, man, the connection between these two players on third down, and it's always these little delay type of routes. He lets the coverage clear out, and then he finds the soft spot in the zone, gives his quarterback a nice target. I'm so impressed with these two players, man. Amon Ross St. Brown already four receptions tonight for 41 yards after only in a couple of balls last week against Stanford. I see six of seven on the down conversion. First and ten to midfield. Play fit. Sprinting out. Underneath. That one deflected and incomplete. P.J. Locke got up and knocked that one to the ground. Oof. The athleticism of these players, man, is just it's astounding. And Locke, he stops himself and then goes up high points with one hand. Bats that ball out of midair. Second and ten at the 50. 8.24 to go, second quarter, one point affair. Daniels. Deep ball again. He's got a receiver. Caught inside the 10. Amon Ra. St. Brown. 41 yards. What a great adjustment by the wide receiver, but JT Daniels got away with one there. Brandon Jones really should have intercepted that ball. It was severely underthrown, and then Jones mistimed his jump. St. Brown did not. Now five catches for 90 yards. This guy's instincts are second to none for a young player. First down and goal at the Texas 9. Daniels sprints out, throws back in the end zone, and incomplete. Pittman had two hands on it. 
just couldn't bring it in. Yeah, that was an excellent throw. Again, that rolling to your left, it's so difficult. It's easier if you can loft it towards the corner of the end zone like Daniels is doing here. Devontae Davis covering it. He's hurt in the back of the end zone. But Amon Ross St. Brown has had a tremendous first half as they take a look at Davis. But I guess you would come into college football as a true freshman balling out when your brother one is named Equiminus and the other is named Osiris and once upon a time your dad was in pretty good shape I mean like, like Mr. Universe yes yeah that's what his dad John was a Mr. Universe back in his day and Equiminus you know played wide receiver for Notre Dame here here are the brothers Equiminus St. Brown Osiris at Stanford. They played each other a week ago. Amon Ra, the true freshman at USC. There we go. Woo! John, John Brown. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, who? My goodness, two-time Mr. Universe. You know, their their mom's so impressive as well. Miriam and Davis is up now, heading back to the sideline. Their mom handled all the schooling parts, so they are fluid in German and French, all the boys. I'll tell you, talking with Amon Ross St. Brown, he's one of the most impressive college football players I've had the chance to meet in several years. It's coming from a guy that uh, knows a lot about this game. Second down and goal at the nine. Daniels flares it out. Sidney! And he's knocked out of bounds. Inside the two-yard line, Anthony Cook got him. Cook came in for Devontae Davis. And it was a designed pick play, so the wide receivers were blocking downfield, but it doesn't draw the penalty because the ball was completed behind the line of scrimmage. Good design there from USC. Third down goal at the one. Vavai Malapaya checks in at running back. They give it to him straight ahead. He leans forward and is denied. So the Trojans have to make a decision, but a flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be against USC, and now they're just asking Tom Herman whether they want to make it the fourth down inside the one yard line or move them back for the third down. So, a decision now for Herman. I would force basically, if this is a game of poker, I'm calling if I'm Tom Herman and forcing the decision onto the other side from Clay Helton. I would decline the penalty, make it fourth down inside the one, and say, go ahead. And that's what he does. Now it's Clay Helton's decision. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. That penalty's declined. It's going to be fourth down. We've got an injured player on the defense. That's a good decision there for Herman. It looks like that's Taekwon Graham, the sophomore from Temple, Texas. So SC, what are they going to do? It looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field and go for it. What kind of plays are effective, Joel, this close to the goal line? Well, it's important that the ball is on the left hash. You've got a right-handed quarterback, so you look for something that may be a fake on the inside, rolling your quarterback out to the right and getting the fullback Malapai into the flat and end zone towards the right side of the field. Out of the out formation. Carr and Malapai, they pitch it. Carr turns on the Jets and is knocked out of bounds. But there is a flag. Brandon Jones denies it. Number 29 and number 82. The penalties decline. Ball goes over on down. That's Petit at Malapai. So a great goal line stand by the University of Texas. Late in the second quarter, we've got a one point game in Austin.
Coming your way on the State Farm halftime, a pair of top 10 teams upset at home. The Buckeyes faced their sternest test yet in the form of number 15 TCU. And Bama took a show on the road. Ole Miss, they can tailgate, but can they upset Gus Joel? We'll see you at the break. Stoner, thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Great defense by Texas. They denied USC on a fourth down and goal at the one. Now they take over at their own three-yard line. And a flag. Be interesting if they call this actually on Port Augustin because USC might have been in the neutral zone. Both start, no, both he wasn't. Offense, number 47, half the distance to the goal, first down. So see some self-inflicted wounds by this Texas offense. Yeah, we are, but watch this. See how poor Augustine, 45, he was kind of moving close to the line of scrimmage. I thought might that might be what drew Beck into his false start, but he was not in the neutral zone yet. First down and 11. The handoff, Young, trucks forward. Daniel Young, sophomore from Houston. And he's the heavy back. These are the big fellas to try to get this ball away from their own end zone. 230 pounds in the backfield. Gained five yards, second and six at the seven. Little breathing room for Texas. Ellinger in trouble. Ellinger sacked. Is it a safety is the question. Well, this near official Gus is going to give him the half yard line. Remember, the ball has to get out of the end zone completely. Is that the ball was beyond the goal line, third down. If any part of this ball is touching goal line when Ellinger is down, it's a safety. The field is the ball was beyond the goal line. That plays under further review. And I think this one's going to be overturned because you can clearly see. Gus that his knees were down all those USC players laying on his legs and that ball was not yet fully out of the end zone. Remember again any part of the ball touching the goal line is a safety for USC. And it clearly looked like the ball was the back of the ball was touching the goal line. Mike Pereira is all queued up. Mike your thoughts. Always agree with my man Joel Klatt. This is the situation where the entire ball must get out. I can't really see the knee, but when the left elbow hits, you can actually see that the back of the ball is still over the line. So to me, they need to reverse this and make this a safety. And there's a knee down the first time the knee is down. Remember, and Mike, you always tell me these guys can piece together several different angles and the timing of all these angles to realize that that's about when knee is hitting right there ball clearly in the end zone not even close to out of the end zone so I think this one's going to be reversed and USC will be awarded the safety after further review the ruling on the field stands third wow. down I have no wow. idea how in the world they can arrive at that conclusion. All right, thank you very much, Mike. So Texas dodges a huge bullet here with 622 to play in the second quarter. They're faced with a third down and 12 at the one inch line. Just just the laws of physics don't allow his knees to be up when other players have their entire body weight on top of them. That is a poor call and a huge break from Texas. Huge break. That should have been a safety. No question about it. I don't know, Joel. Do you want to believe the official or your lying eyes? Third and 12 at the one. <laughs> we'll hand it off. And Young will give him a little room to punt it away. Well, regardless, that ball has got to be either thrown away or Ellinger has got to escape the pocket a lot quicker. That's the risk that you take when you drop back inside the pocket in your own end zone. But boy, Clay Helton is going to be furious when he sees that in review, but he can't focus on that now. Defense did a nice job changing the field position here late in the second quarter. Tyler Vaughn is the deep man. Puchevsky all the way in the back of his own end zone. Here they come. And a flag. SC bails him out. And let's see which penalty this will be. Personal foul. Ruffing the kicker. 
Defense, number 15. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Amatic, first down. Well, the new punter for Texas, he took a little bit too much time, and as the contact is made, he takes away his plant leg as well. Not just contacting the kicking leg, but takes away his plant leg. Good call for the personal foul, but boy, oh so close to actually blocking that punt. Texas had a punt blocked last week against Tulsa. USC gambled. Clay Helton came after it. And it bit him. How about that turn of events? Should have been a safety. Talanoa Hufunga running into the punter. And he's a true freshman from Corvallis, Oregon. Tremendous talent. 524 to go. In the second, interesting turn of events. Longhorns will keep it. One point of error here in Austin, Texas. Huge turn of events. USC should have been awarded a safety and replay. My prayer is with us in L.A. Mike, if they tell you you can't see the knee, I see the elbow, and the ball's still not out of the goal line. Yeah, Joel, this is the first one that I looked at because, yes, you can piece together to see the knee is down. But when you look here, the elbow is down, and the whole ball has to get out. And that would have been the shot I would have focused on. Really, that was a safety. All right, Mike, thank you very much. First down and 10 at the 18-yard line for Texas. Young trying to squeeze through the hole. Not a lot of room. And just as a quick update, during the break, Clay Helton challenged that personal foul roughing the punter and thought that the ball may have been tipped. It was not. We had a clear angle of that. It was not tipped, so USC was charged a timeout. Second and eight. Ellinger sprints out. In trouble. Ellinger. And he's sacked at the five yard line. Porter Gustin. Christian Rector. That's a loss of 15 yards. And Rector was unblocked on that backside because it was a designed rollout to the left. Watch him see unblocked. That ball is supposed to be out right now. So as soon as Ellinger has got to come back to his right, he's going to have an unblocked player in his face. Gustin as well from that front side in the backfield. So third down and 22 at the six for Texas. This is, you got to hand this ball off. You know, the, the momentum is a little bit against you here. They'll throw it. Ellinger wants to run it. And he'll gain a yard. Maybe two. Gustin and Rector again. It's a good decision from Ellinger. It's the last thing you want to do is put that ball into double coverage, throw it into a precarious spot down the field. And so Ellinger eats it. Put your punting unit on the field. They've gotten a couple of really big breaks here on this series. And now a chance to change the field position a little bit from what it was previous. Ryan Buczewski about six yards deep in his own end zone. Tyler Vaughn is the deep man for SC. Buczewski sends it away and it's fair caught inside Texas territory. 41 yard punt. Let's go Greg Wolf for a game break. Best thanks back to Arlington. TCU trailed Ohio State 10-0. They've responded. Darius Anderson, he can squat 700 pounds. He can bench press double his weight, but scouts love his 4-3-9-40 speed. He goes 93 yards for the touchdown. TCU with the lead 14-13 at the half. Gus, Joel, back to you. Well, round college football. Here's what we've seen. 14 games were canceled because of Hurricane Florence. Oklahoma went up to Iowa State, won by 10. Kyler Murray, huge day. Wisconsin lost at home. Auburn lost at home. Gutty win there from LSU, kicked a field goal to win by one as time ran out. And Carr wrestled down well behind the line of scrimmage. That Texas defense playing a lot better. Chris Nelson as well as Jeffrey McCullough leading the way. Yeah, that defensive front it's been tough to run against. They have not gotten much movement. Speaking of that USC offensive line, which is why the bulk of the game plan has fallen onto the shoulder of JP Daniels like it will here in second and long. Loss of six, second and 16. 
Daniels looking deep again. Daniels incomplete. Caden Stearns there defensively for Texas. As Valus Jones was the intended receiver. And if Devontae Davis isn't there, I think Stearns picks this off or, or vice versa. Davis probably has an interception. Stearns had an interception as a true freshman last week. This guy is an unbelievable player. Five-star safety, true freshman, just a terrific young talent. Coming out of high school, he was considered the number one safety prospect in the nation. Third and 16. Daniels, under pressure, Daniels goes down, another sack for Texas. Boy, they brought the house. Gary Johnson getting home. Watch Johnson, here he is, and he's gonna get into the backfield. Really, there's nowhere to go. He was unblocked, though. Kind of a mistake by the back. Malapai, he goes all the way up towards the inside, and you see how he had to kind of come back to his right, and that ball actually was out. Daniels did a nice job recovering it. Gary Johnson, they've been waiting for this guy to show out. He's got immense talent, and Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, told us that this is the guy that they could lean on as a senior, as a leaner. He's six foot, 230 pounds. He can run. They clocked him on GPS at 22 miles an hour in a practice, and they've just been waiting for him to show out. Well, on that last snap, he sure showed out for the sack. Tell you what, Coach Orlando has to be happy. He's got the best afro in all of college football coaching. <laughs> hey, man, he was so happy when you told him that yesterday, too. He smiled all big, and he looked at you. He's like, hey, my wife said that to me, too. <laughs> so good. What a great defense coordinator he has been with Tom Hearn to Houston. Cut his teeth at Utah State under Gary Anderson, along with Dave Aranda. So two of the best defensive coordinators, really, in college football, Dave Aranda, Todd Orlando. Coming from that same tree under Gary Anderson, who is now the 10th assistant at Utah. Second punt for Tilby. Shanked. 2.20 to play in the second quarter. Texas will get great field position. These fans here are invested. Post guards from Fansville. Sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, opened in 1924 with a capacity of 27,000. Now the capacity is 100,119. Largest stadium in the Big 12, eighth largest stadium in the United States. You want to see Fansville come alive? How about a score before half? Kyle Porter has checked in at running back for Texas, first down. At the 49. Ellinger down the sideline. Incomplete. Devin Duvnay had a step. That ball thrown short. Greg Johnson was his hip pocket. Thought it was also thrown a little bit late. That deep ball, you know, when your wide receiver is even, you got to give him as much air and as much room as you possibly can. He's got to slow down. That's what allowed Greg Johnson to get back into the play, and the redshirt freshman is able to break it up. Second and ten. Here comes a blitz. Ellinger in trouble. Ellinger dancing. And throws it out of bounds. Nancy Pendergast bringing pressure for that USC defense. Yeah, the nickelback, Ajene Harris, the senior from Los Angeles. He was in the backfield on a little bit of a delayed blitz. And as Ellinger spun around and was trying to find some open area, Harris was right there waiting for him. Clancy Pendergast, one of the most creative defensive coordinators in college football with the NFL background that he has he gives a lot of different looks week to week very specific to the offense that he's about to face Texas fourth nine on third down conversions facing a third and ten here come more pressure Ellinger wants to run it can he get a block Ellinger dies won't get there short 
So with 1.55 to go, Texas with one timeout left. Let's see if they go for it. Boy, this is a tough decision for Tom Herman because you can pin an 18 year old inside of his own 10 yard line. They've played really well in this second quarter. The fans want him to go. You know the players want him to go. He talked about pushing all the chips into the middle of the table when he talked with Jenny Taft before the game. And he's going to do it right here. He's got a 6 3, 230 pound quarterback that can run. And he'll run it for the first down. And pick it up. Sam Ellinger. First down, Texas. A gain of four on fourth and one. And Kyle Porter here with a great block. Watch Kyle Porter, the running back. He's the one that's going to get all the way on the outside. And right there, there's the block on the safety, C.J. Pollard, that springs Ellinger around the edge for the first down. First down at the 38-yard line for Texas. 117 to go. Sam Ellinger with time. Ellinger first down and he slides down to the USC 25. But there is a flag on the play. Holding. Offense number 77. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Patrick Vahe, the left guard. And right when Ellinger took off, he ran right past his big guard, Patrick Vahe. And Malik Dorton, who was rushing against him, he turned to try to run after Ellinger. There's his right on your left side, the left oh, guard. And as Ellinger mean. takes off right at that left seam, watch, he's going to take off right now. And then here, that's when that jersey gets old. And the official pulls out the flag. First down to 20 at 48. Ellinger going to have to throw it. 52 seconds to go. Ellinger. And incomplete. Will Jordan Humphrey, the intended receiver. Now, Texas has got to find some way to exploit the middle of the field. You know, USC right now, they're playing everybody deep, and the linebackers are moving way outside. And you get the sense that they got to come back to Colin Johnson at some point over the middle. Remember, their freshman kicker. Cameron Dicker is two for two, including a 46 yarder. Second and 20 at the 48. Ellinger. Deep throw. Ellinger. Incomplete. Devin Duvernay. Looks similar to the route that he ran for the touchdown against Maryland the opening week, but there is a flag. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 45. 15 yard penalty the previous spot. Automatic first down. So here's Porter Gustin. He's working against 52. Samuel Osme. And see this right hand right there. Now it gets up into the face. Excellent call by the official right in front of him. But boy, oh, so close down the field. What a great route. Getting the separation in the back end, but another penalty here for USC, and now Texas is in business with a nice first down. 36 seconds remaining. Texas with one timeout left. First down and 10 at the USC 33. You know, the middle of the field past the chains. That's where it's open right now. Sam Ellinger to the sideline. Oh, incomplete. Colin Johnson knocked out of bounds. Really good coverage from Iman Marshall, the senior corner. Colin Johnson made a great adjustment on the ball, goes up, but watch Marshall as he just pushes him out of bounds. Unable to control it or get a body part in. Second and 10 at the 33. 30 seconds to play in the first half. They still have time, but again, the, you know, the middle of the field. Now, every pass thrown, you got to throw it past the chains or else you're going to have to burn a timeout. Ellinger. And almost intercepted. Wow. Well defended by this USC team this time. It's the same man that got the big penalty. Hufanga. 
And Talanoa Pafonga, he's another true freshman with immense talent for this USC team and almost made a play on that ball there. And now it's a big third down here. Where do they need to go to get into field goal range, Joel? I think they need to go with a kicker like they've got probably to the 28. So you're looking at five yards right now for a legitimate shot because if they kick it from this point, it would be about USC a 50 yard field goal. Takes his third and five Texas five calls five their five final timeout. One minute. Excuse me, SC calls their final timeout. Coming up at the half, Rob Stone, Dave Wattstadt, Matt Leinert, and Robert Smith are standing by with the State Farm Halftime Show. A lot to talk about, third week of the college football season. Ohio State, Alabama, active today, this evening. There's a young man, Cameron Dicker, freshman from Austin. 20-yarder and a 46-yarder, his first field goal attempts of his career. Two-time all state in the state of Texas, but I, I think they need to get this more in kind of 45 yard range. Ellinger, can he do it? He'll run it. And Ellinger dives forward, picks up four as John Houston makes the tackle. And that run was totally designed for the kicker. It was designed as a quarterback run, and he took it to the middle of the field so that Dicker would have a better angle at this field goal attempt. Texas calls a timeout three seconds ago. Here comes the freshman. Can he stay perfect in this first half? Fourteen thirteen SC, but Texas will attempt a field goal. As Cameron Dicker. Two for two. He's got a cool nickname. They call him Dicker the kicker. Nailed a 46 yarder. His prep career high, a 53-yarder. This one from 46 yards again. Huchewski the holder, clean snap, good hold. Dicker the kicker. And the Longhorns head into the locker room with the lead. Two 46 yarders and a 20 yarder. And Matthew McConaughey says, All right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's half time here in Austin, Texas. Great first half. Now let's send you to Rob Stone in Los Angeles. 16-14, the halftime score. Texas on top of SC. Gus Johnson, along with my partner Joel Klatt. Interesting uh, turn of events yeah. at the end of that first half. I mean, it, it was wild. It really could have gone either direction here. Let's take a look at our All-State Mayhem moments, and it was all those moments to end the first half, and it really started when Texas on defense bowed their neck, and they were able to get a stop at the goal line. Tom Herman loved it on a fourth down and turned it over, but here was a big moment. Really should have been a safety. It was not overturned in replay when it should have been, and on the ensuing punt, the personal foul running into the kicker, roughing the kicker that gave a free first down and it would all wind up on Dicker the kicker's foot and boom he was true all right all right all right <laughs> Matthew McConaughey with Roger Clemens in attendance so Texas gets the football back to start the second half with a two-point lead line drive fielded Inside the five yard line by Jamison. And Deshaun Jamison plowing forward as he gets to the 26 yard line. Let's go downstairs and check in with Jenny Taft. Well, you guys just brought it up, that possible miss safety there. It's the first thing I asked Coach Helton about, and he said I was begging for it. The guys responded well to it. We're on the road. We can't let those things bother us. But overall, I also asked about his quarterback, JT Daniels. He said for the guy to have just under 200 yards on the road in this environment, I'm liking what I'm seeing. As for Coach Herman, he said for Ellinger, the confidence is there, but sometimes he's making the wrong moves. And on defense, our third down defense, not good enough. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. First down and 10 of the 26. 
Ellinger handing this football off to Watson. And Trey Watson, the graduate transfer from Cal, tackled from behind by Cameron Smith. And they are without really their most talented running back in this game, Keontae Ingram, a true freshman. Ellinger, who started so hot, really cooled off there at the end, but I thought it was play selection. They're just kind of chucking the ball deep on 20 yard go routes and 25 yard corner routes rather than work in the middle of the field to end that half. Second down and seven to the 29. And they'll run it around the corner. Deshaun Jamison nowhere. Tell you what, Gustin reading the play nicely as well as a Jane Harris. Those edge players, like the outside linebackers like a Porter Gustin, they've got to be so disciplined because they've got so much going on right in front of them. They can't get sucked down into the inside, in particular when you've got some of those fly sweep type action coming at you. He did a great job there staying home and then making the play. Third down and eight at the 28. Empty backfield for Sam Ellinger. He'll throw it. Ellinger steps into his throw and has Lil Jordan for first down. Game 11 on third and eight. And there's that intermediate throw that I was talking about, an out route from the inside. Watch Ellinger as he puts his eyes on the safety right there. Safety's got inside leverage. You run the out route, it's an easy completion. First down, Ellinger again to throw it. And incomplete. Lil Jordan Humphrey just couldn't hang on to the football in front of a J.D. Harris. That ball really needs to be caught by little Jordan Humphrey. Maybe just a touch high, but certainly hit him right in the face mask as he was getting contacted. Second and ten. The handoff. Watson. And John Houston, first man to him. Gain of three. In that first series, we saw Colin Johnson. It's like he was shot out of a cannon. Three catches on that opening series. And we have not called his number much since. You get the sense that Texas might go back there after they got to recalibrate at halftime. Third down, seven at the 41. Opening series of the second half for UT. Ellinger. Dancing. Ellinger. Oh, tell you what. Joel, he has been throwing some nice balls tonight. Colin Johnson, as you mentioned, they go back to him, and that's a first down for the Longhorns. Yeah, they actually went to the shorter guy, Devin Duvernay, and on that little hook route, he was able to get in there all contested, USC all over him, and he was able to make the catch. And a false start called against the Longhorns. False start, offense, number 52. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's Cosme, the redshirt freshman. Second week in a row that he's starting due to the injured center, Zach Shackelford. Remember everyone moving down, Elijah Rodriguez, number 72 at center, bumping down from his guard spot. First and 15 at the 45. Flag on the play. Underneath, Colin Johnson. Well, there may be two flags on this play. Ellinger, helmet off. And the danger here is that Porter Gustin was one in the backfield that hit Ellinger. Ellinger's helmet popped off, and that was the flag. So it's just a matter of if they're going to get him for, and there was also an offside on USC to begin the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 45. That 15-yard penalty would be added to the end of the run. There was also offsides on the, on the defense. Second 15-yard penalty called First against down. Porter Gustin in this game. Boy, that was awful close to the throw. I thought that the flag might be in the targeting direction because of the helmet being knocked off as it kind of popped up into the air. USC shooting themselves in the foot with these penalties. First down at the 38-yard line. And they're going to take a look at that. And, and this is going to be a stoppage from replay. And this is what they're going to look at is what... I, it looked like targeting to me. Yeah, you know, you, you just want to make sure. And they're going to take a look at where Porter Gustin contacted Sam Ellinger. And let's look for the indicators. First, you look for the indicators of crown, launch, and he's certainly in crown. Launch and there is a launch and if that 
was his helmet that contacted the helmet of Ellinger first, then I think we might be in line for Port Augustine to be ejected from this game. Mike Pereira joins us. Michael, your thoughts? Well, here's what they're looking at, of course, is the crown of the helmet. And what is the definition of a crown? And really, when you think about it, it's anything above the face mask. So even though he didn't totally dip, it's anything above the face mask that goes 360, yard, 360 degrees around the top of the head. So that's what they've got to look at. Remember, he called roughing the passer. So regardless, if targeting ends up being called, there's still a penalty on the play. But that's what Jack McDonald wanted to see, and I'm with you, Joel. After There's a good review, chance they could make this It's targeting. been determined that 45 led with his helmet. It's targeting. Number 45 is disqualified. Port Augustine will be sent off. And this is really the defining look, and that helmet certainly, with the crown as defined by Mike Pereira, contacted the head or neck area. Really no argument here. That's as defined by the rule book a targeting and now USC is going to watch one of their best defenders most reliable defenders exit this game in a two point affair in the third quarter. And he's their senior captain. Well, I have to sit out the set the first half of the Washington State game next Friday night as well since this is in the second half just to start the third quarter. What a huge turn of events. First down for Texas at the 38. Sam Ellinger in trouble. Wants to run it. And picks up some positive yardage. CJ Pollard with the tackle for SC. Well, talk about taking advantage of opportunities. And Texas certainly has an opportunity here. As USC is unraveling because of some of these penalties and and misfortune, Ellinger's got a chance here up to to really make a statement in this game early in the third quarter and create the momentum for his team. And he's got a red hot kicker on his side, second and six at the 34. Here's a snap, and they'll hand it off. Watson picks up a first down. Trey Watson, he's been a great addition, according to the coaches, to this running back room. I love how the center here, he's first, he's going to go to the right. Watch as Elijah Rodriguez goes to the right, he knocks the defensive end, or excuse me, the defensive tackle, and then he goes up and he gets a piece of Cameron Smith. Ellinger down the field, touchdown, Texas, Joshua Moore. the safety you see 28 he's putting his arms out watch 28 CJ Pollard he goes to the middle of the field and that's what allows the space great job by Moore getting into that space he beats Harris the nickel back to the spot and Ellinger with a beautiful throw Sam Ellinger 12 of 23 180 yards two touchdowns no interceptions he was very efficient last week against Tulsa Completing 78% of his passes. He was 20 of 27. Now Cameron Dicker comes in for the extra point. And it's good. 20 straight points for Texas. Big one here in the third quarter. And the Longhorns take a 23 to 14 lead over Southern California, Texas. And partner, this place is special. I would call it one of the meccas of college football. It was an honor to compete here. Tom Herman would tell you it's an honor to coach here. And the Longhorns run off 20 straight points, 23-14. This place is bumping. How will USC respond? JT Daniels, the freshman, will get his opportunity the first of the second half right after this. Lives to be a national champion. Power of Ambition, sponsored by SoFi, a personal finance company to fit your goals. Well, 
This is where it's got to turn around right here. 18 year old in the cauldron of Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium. First down and they'll run it with Ware. That Texas defense now hungry. Last four possessions after leading it 14 to three for USC, two punts and interception, and they turned it over on downs at the one yard line. I mean, just to get you a sense, in the last 11 and a half minutes of game time, Texas has had the ball 10 and a half of those minutes, only 59 seconds time possession recently. It just feels like USC has had no chances here of late with the ball, and there's the time possession in the game, dominated by the Texas Longhorns. Second down and eight at the 27. Daniels rolls out of the pocket and throws it out of bounds. That brings up third down and eight at the 27. First series of the second half for the USC offense. And on third down in the first half, they were looking really in one direction, and that was true freshman to true freshman, Amon Ra St. Brown. Malapai, Aka Cedric Ware in the backfield with JT Daniels. Sideline and incomplete. Trayvon Sidney just couldn't dig it out and the Trojans will have to punt it away. And it looked like Daniels just didn't put enough on this ball. You know, those slot out routes, you got to step into that and drive this ball. It's to the wide side of the field. And watch here as the wide receiver, he gets the separation. If that ball hits him in the chest, it's a first down. But he's got to lunge and dive towards the ground to try to catch it. So a poor throw there from Daniels. SC will punt it away. Pudrovich. His second punt of the game, the first for 46 yards. This one shanked again. Wow. SC unraveling in Austin. And Sam Ellinger, he's starting to find his rhythm. Dedication. Attention to detail. Aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. Last year between these two teams in Los Angeles, it was a double overtime thriller. Won by SC 27-24 to Chase McGrath. 43-yard field goal. Different story right now. Texas up 23-14. And Sam Ellinger has found his rhythm over the last two weeks. Here's the handoff. Watson. And you notice as Ellinger completes passes downfield, now that running game is opening up, and you see this offensive line starting to move some yeah. people a little bit. And what I like to see is Ellinger's controlling the game from the field. He checked that last play, got him into a solid run. Ellinger pulls it out, bottled up, and makes chicken salad, gets close to the first down. Christian Rector with the tackle. But it was interesting talking to him yesterday. He's from Austin, and he just has always wanted to be the person that he is right now leading the long run. Yep, desperate to be the quarterback that leads them back to prominence. Third down and one, looking for the first. And he'll get it. Drew Brees, one of his idols, went to Drew Brees' camp in Orlando. When he was a high school player. They wanted him. It was a national seven-on-seven -seven tournament. I mean, that Westlake program right here in the Austin area, they've had Drew Brees, they've had Nick Foles, you know, I mean, they, they know good quarterback play. Sam Ellinger was the junior state player of the year as a junior in high school and has wanted to be a Longhorn his whole life. Ellinger to throw, under pressure. Breaks contained, throws on the move, and incomplete. Well, Sam Ellinger gets a lot of inspiration from his high school coach. And for more, let's go to Jenny Tapp. Well, it's pretty special, Gus, to have a chance to talk with Todd Dodge today about the quarterback. And really, he said he is one of the most intelligent players I have ever coached. He's got this toughness, and he has no doubt that his physical and mental strength, it, it has a lot of potential for what he can do at Texas. And, hey, Dodge knows he was a quarterback at Texas. He tells him, avoid paying attention to the talk, the negativity, the positivity. Don't pay attention. Control what you can control. Second down and 10 at the 44. Ellinger steps up. 
Let's it go. Oh, what a catch. Give me that. And don't say nothing, Colin Johnson. 29 yards. Those of us that were little brothers, we know what this feels like when your taller, older brother just goes up over your head and just grabs the ball, snatches a rebound in the front yard, grabs the ball over your head. That's what just happens right there. Colin Johnson, unbelievable move. First down at the 15. Ellinger again to throw the end zone. Incomplete. Johnson just couldn't hold on. Love the back and forth. Isaiah Ly Langley now wins that time. Watch how he goes up Langley with his right hand right through the hands of Johnson. And then the ball's bouncing around. I mean, he has a chance to catch that two or three times. I would be surprised if they went right back to this man, Colin Johnson, the junior from San Jose. Second and ten. That's because of that, if I was USC, I'd put a safety over the top over there. Is he there? Not right now. In fact, he's moving down. C.J. Pollard, 28. He's moving down. Gallagher hands it off. Young can't get outside. And it'll be lucky. He fumbles the ball. Let's see if he was down. And they give it to SC. Wow. Ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. Well, Daniel Young was fighting for extra yardage, but watch as he's when he goes down, he's on top of the USC players. That's a fumble. That's a fumble because he's on top. Who's, who is that down there? Iman Marshall punched it out. Number eight. And that was Malik Dorton at the bottom, 44. That's where Young was kind of sitting as he sat back. And that ball was definitely loose. It didn't seem like any part of his body touched because he was laying on Dorton. Wow. What a huge play for USC because the, mo I mean, the momentum and everything was going against them up to that point here in this quarter. And really since about the three minute mark of the first half. So the Trojans take over at their own 17, down 23 to 14. We're going to take a look at it. 8.03 to go back after this third quarter. This is incredible. Man, these Thursday night games are good. Let's take a look at our heavy duty player sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. And it's Christian Rector who just came up with a huge play. But earlier tonight, it was the pressure that he was able to provide on Sam Ellinger right in his chest. Ellinger underthrew that ball down the field. And then later, he squeezes down, makes the tackle as Ellinger is trying to run that quarterback power. This is an excellent example of just doing your job, rolling down that left side, and he's right there, able to help get the sack. And then, Fighting for the ball. Rector is able to punch it out. JT Daniels throws the deep ball. Whoa! Inside the 30. Guess who? I'm on Ross St. Brown. 53 yards. This kid is electric. And that's their first first down since the series that ended with the fourth down stop inside the five. They've gone three and out, three and out, and they go back to the most consistent player tonight, the true freshman Amon Ross St. Brown, who's had a heck of a game. Six catches, 141 yards. He's averaging 23 yards per catch. First down and 10 of the 30. I can Cedric Ware, nothing. He'll be dropped for about a four-yard loss. Gary Johnson with pressure. Boy, those linebackers are flying around tonight, aren't they? Been very impressed with Gary Johnson. Jeffrey McCulloch also in on that play, number 23. He's the one that kind of provided that early pressure, and Gary Johnson was there to clean it up. Second down and 12 at the 32. There's been nowhere to run on this Texas defense tonight. New record crowd tonight, 103,507. The previous record was 102-315. Versus Notre Dame in 2016. Second and 12. Daniels floats it up the sideline. And incomplete. Brown, the intended receiver, covered by Chris Boyd. Boy, I thought that ball was thrown too far out of bounds, or else 
They might have drawn a flag there because Boyd was all over St. Brown. Tons of contact, but that's what Coach Helton is saying right now. Yeah, and I agree with him. I mean, he was all over St. Brown. There's no reason that a flag couldn't have came out except for the fact that maybe the ball was just a little too far and out of bounds. But, boy, awful close. USC has gotten some raw deals on the officiating tonight. Third down and 12 at the 32. Daniels delivers incomplete. Michael Pittman, the intended receiver. That Texas defense bending, but not breaking. USC still having problems when they get it inside the 40-yard line. And Todd Orlando knows that, and so he's trying to speed up the timing of the young quarterback. And on that play, JT Daniels wasn't able to set his feet and throw the ball and drive it onto the frame. He threw it off his back foot again. Chase McGrath into attempt a 50-yarder. McGrath blocked. Has it? Wheeler down the sideline. Touchdown, Longhorns. Caden Stearns blocked this. Place kick here. He hops over, unblocked, and the true freshman with a huge play. Wheeler, scoop and score for Texas. The Texas Longhorns, under second year coach Herman, trying to shake off the Hanks, and they're doing it in a big way right now. Offense, defense, special teams. Right now, a special night in Austin for UT. And a late flag throw will stay right here. The try is good after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. USC, sorry, USC, number 78. It's a 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. That's number 78's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. You want a home with an extra bedroom, because sometimes you have guests, but mostly you have stuff. You need Realtor.com, the home of home search. You want a home with at least 2,000 square feet. Actually, make it 2,500. You need Realtor.com, the home of home search. Thirty to fourteen. Texas. Twenty-seven straight points. The Longhorns have scored. Let's go back and check out that unsportsmanlike conduct after the PAT. Watch seventy-eight. He's kind of shoving here, shoving around, and then there. See that second, and that's what always draws the foul. That was Jay Tufele, redshirt freshman from Salt Lake City, Utah. Longhorn sends it away deep, and it's kicked out of the end zone. Let's go to Los Angeles and check in with Greg Wolf for an update. Gus, thanks. We go back to Arlington after an Ohio State touchdown. Very next series, Sean Robinson. Dangerous shovel pass. Draymond Jones says thank you very much. 28 yards for the score. Two touchdowns in just over a minute to take the lead. They have added another. Ohio State leads TCU 33-21, third quarter. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Greg. Those Buckeyes are awfully tough. Urban Meyer serving the final game of his suspension tonight. And boy, he'd love to come back to work tomorrow with a win against TCU Ooh. on the road. You ain't lying. First and 10 of the 25 for SC. Daniels puts it out. And they'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Josh Fallow with the reception. And he just gets manhandled by Devontae Davis. Gus. Do you hear this right now? This is what they have been waiting for at Texas. 
this 103,000 chanting for a defense that just scored another non-offensive touchdown. Eight last year led the country. Getting one here against USC, creating the momentum. This is what the Longhorns have been waiting for. Second down and nine to the 26 for the 22nd rank. USC Trojans as Michael Pittman gets to the 30. Yes, this is what they've been waiting for, but they don't like to wait long in Texas. Ask Coach Tom Herman. He's been feeling a little pressure. Coach Herman. They want it every week. That's what they want. They want nine straight 10 win seasons that Mac Brown delivered. Tom Herman was hired in part because of his success against the AP Top 25, 6 and 0 at Houston. It has not been the same here at Texas at just one and four. Third down and five. Daniels in trouble and he dumps it off, but it'll be a tackle for a loss. That's because there was pressure and Anthony Wheeler, who recovered the fumble, came up with the tackle. USC will have to send it away once again. Three touchdown lead last week. Tom Herman went in at halftime and he screamed and yelled. Tilby sends it away. This one bounces backwards and takes a Texas bounce and goes out of bounds inside USC territory. Now this week on Thursday Night Football, Sam Darnold and the Jets take on the Browns exclusively on the NFL Network, but our crew will be calling it Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Aaron Andrews, and Christina Pink. And starting in week four, Fox becomes the new network home to Thursday Night Football with the Vikings battle the Rams. Hey, man, do you have Hugh Jackson's number? Yes, I'd like to get his number to tell him to play Baker Mayfield. That's what I'm talking about. Could we get a little Mayfield versus Darnold? That's what I've been waiting for. I don't know about the 103,000 here. That's what I've been waiting for. I don't like to talk about Baker Mayfield. We asked uh, Sam Ellinger about <laughs> Baker Mayfield. I thought he was going to snap my neck right there. Don't ask me about that guy. First down and 10 at midfield. Here's a handoff. Watson bursting through the hole. And he'll pick up a first down. Everybody confident on that Texas team now. Yeah. CJ Pollard with the tackle. That old line creating hole. And Elijah Rodriguez, the center, is doing a great job. You know, he got a lot of movement right there in the middle of the offensive line and created that seam. Moved from his guard position, senior from Houston. Nine yard gain, second down and short at the first down for Texas. Well, special teams have just killed USC tonight. The, the punt team in particular. They have given short field after short field after short field to this Texas offense and that's what has started to develop this rhythm as Malik Dorton the redshirt senior from Los Angeles as the Trojan hobbled on the field. He already has received his degree in communications at USC. He's now working on a master's degree in communication management. All American out of high school, 6'2, 280 pounds. Big fella. Getting up slowly. Good sign. He's looking at that, and it looked like he may have just hit knees with Cameron Smith. They were kind of wrapped around the ball carrier at the same time. Kind of landed awkwardly. Jordan trotting off the field on his own. 30 to 14 our score. Under four minutes to play in the third quarter. Texas with the lead and the football. First and 10 at the 38. The quarterback Sam Ellinger, sophomore from here in Austin has been brilliant. USC better adjust here. Here's Ellinger. And he dumps it out of play. Tell you what, Texas executed just a perfect shift and had all the numbers and the ratios. I said, USC better adjust here because Texas had a tight end, the running back, and the numbers. There was only three defenders on the left side of the Texas offense, and they just decided to throw it. That, that play's got to be checked to a run on that left side. It would have been out the gate. 
Second down and 10 at the 38. Allegra 13 of 27, 208 yards passing. The throw it. Steps into his throw down the field. That's got to be a flag. Devin Duvernay was going to score a touchdown, and Isaiah Langley knew it. He just grabbed a fist full of his jersey. Easy call there. You're right, partner. He's beat here, grabs him right by the collar to try to catch up. That's, That's exactly favorite. when the flag comes in. Defense number 24. It's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And a nice job from Ellinger putting that ball down the field. Let the wide receiver run and get it. Sam Ellinger, partner, is throwing a beautiful ball tonight. Yeah, he is. He is. Tight spiral. He is spinning it. First and 10 of the 23 for Texas. Developing every week. Better and better. Watson. And Watson will be tackled for a loss. Nicely done by the USC defense as Griffin comes up and makes the tackle. USC was able to get themselves off the field via the turnover. When Young coughed it up. We'll see here now as they back Texas kind of behind the chains here. They can create an opportunity to get off the field once more. Second and 13 of the 26. Ellinger underneath on the slant, and it's caught by Colin Johnson. Gained six yards, so he gets half of it. Third down. Here's why I love a play call like that. Rather than trying to get all of it back all at once, you know, it's second and long. You create an opportunity now where you could still call some sort of quarterback design run or throw a short pass in order to convert. I've always thought you get behind the chains, get half of it back in order to try to convert on the next down. Third down at seven of the 21. Ellinger may try to run this one. Empty backfield. Trips to the top of your screen. Ellinger off his back foot underneath. It's caught and a first down. The hard way Andrew Beck plowing his way forward. The exact example I was talking about, you force USC into an opportunity or a situation where they feel like they have to blitz, they vacate a zone. You can throw it underneath and still get the first down. First down and 10 at the 11. And it's Young. And Young smelling pay dirt. Griffin making the saving tackle. Running game now, opening up. Beck getting up slowly. Now I talked earlier about the fact that the thing holding this offense back was the offensive line's inability to get movement up front. Well, they are starting to move people up front now. And now you're going to start to see Texas's offense reach their full potential. Ellinger reach his full potential. It's on those five guys up front. If they can get people covered up and moved, they're going to be a pretty good football team. Second down and three at the four. Can Texas pay it off? Here's Ellinger. Short side. Sam Ellinger gives the Longhorns a 36 to 14 lead. Well, Ellinger is just going to take it all the way up onto this side of the field. Cameron Smith overruns it. Ellinger goes back to the inside, dives for the end zone. Great block there by backup tight end Cade Brewer on the outside. Really was the one that freed Ellinger up to make the cut and get into the end zone. Now Cameron Dicker comes in to attempt the extra points. A lot of high fives and out of boys being given out on that Texas sideline. Some big smiles as well. Or was he down before he crossed the goal? Sure looks like a touchdown to me. But tonight, I have no idea with this replay crew.
Cameron Dicker for the extra point. And it's good. 34 straight points for the University of Texas. After trailing 14 to 3, the Longhorns up 37 to 14. I thought Texas had potential. When we were talking about this game, what did I tell you? I said if they block people, then they're the equivalent of a 10 win team. That's what I thought the talent was everywhere else. And their offensive line has played that way tonight. So after the huge break, Right, the, the non-safety was an enormous break in this game. It would have been 16-14 at that point, or 16-13, excuse me, ball going to USC. It wasn't, and it's been all Texas from that point on, but their offensive line, Gus, is what has impressed me so far, and that's what's going to give them potential moving forward. And it seems like Ellinger's ability and the offensive line's ability to pass protect has really allowed them to run the football now and move people, as you mentioned. They've got such great Outside, deep threats. On the kicking team, number 45, that five-yard penalty will be enforced from the 25-yard line, first down. They've got such great deep threats that they should be able to get people off the line of scrimmage, get the safeties out of there, get the numbers in their favor in the run game, and then it comes down to those five guys up front. If you can block them up, you can get movement on the defensive line. You're going to have a chance to be very successful, and they've been able to do that. First down to the 30-yard line, Daniels, and he completes the pass to St. Brown. And I'm on Ross St. Brown. Finally brought down by Brandon Jones after a five-yard game. Well, there, was a, there was some hype for Texas coming into the season, and I know people that weren't Longhorn fans kind of rolled their eyes candidly because it seems like every year you're saying to yourself boy Texas could be back this year and certainly don't know if this game means that they're back it just means that they're playing really well right now second down and one and that defensive line is playing well tell you what and the linebackers also Gary Johnson again we've been mentioning his name since the very beginning of this match. And, and Todd Orlando told us that he was the key. If he started playing really well and up to his potential, that they had a chance to be as good of a defense as they were a year ago, in which they were sixth in college football defending the run. Third down and four to 36. Daniels off his back foot, almost picked off. Chris Boyd was there, intended for Michael Pittman. And right now, this USC team wilted under the pressure of the Longhorn. Check out Bre Brecken Hager. He's going to come on the blitz, and he's right on the inside, and then bam. I mean, he hits Daniels right in his midsection. Daniels has nowhere to go with that ball. Not an accurate throw, but not really Daniels' fault. A misprotection up front, and Hager, the captain, able to get home. So USC will punt it away again. Budrovich standing at the 21. He drives this one. And it's fair caught at the 23. Now with the start of the college football season, college basketball is not far behind. And this Thanksgiving, we have a real treat for you on FS1 at Fox, the 2018 Continental Tire. Las Vegas Invitational features four elite programs. Michigan State, North Carolina, Texas, and UCLA. That's coming this Thanksgiving. Tickets are on sale now at OrleansArena.com. Longhorns with the football. First and 10 of their own 24, up 37 to 14, with 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. This defense has been on the field just forever. Let's see if this offensive line can continue to mold down. Young. With room, pulling forward, keeping his feet churning, and he gets to the 31-yard line before being ridden down. You talk about moving people, partner, how's this? Guard, tackle, and then you're going to get around with the tight end as well. Check out that whole right side as it just gets mashed down. That's moving people off the line of scrimmage. And that is the last play of the third quarter. Coming up the fourth quarter from Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium. The Longhorns are balling out at the crib. 37 to 14. Can you feel that fire? 
Welcome back. Fox College football is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve 21 points. Scored by Texas in the third, 13 in the second. And the Longhorns have a 37 to 14 lead over USC. Second and two at the 32. Young running. And Young trying to lean forward as Fort Progress may give him the first down. Daniel Young, the sophomore from Houston. It's like he needed to get all the way to that 35-yard line, 34-yard line. He's going to be about a half yard short. And I think they're going to go right back there to that option. Big back, offensive line feeling it. Third down one. Now they go with the handoff and the first down to Daniel Young. Ansem. Right now, this Texas O-line mauling USC. They've been waiting for that. This offensive line played candidly really poorly against Maryland and against Tulsa on the film. They knew it. They talked about it with us in their coaching meetings, but they've played tremendous tonight. First down, Texas. Ellinger, sideline and incomplete. Colin Johnson, the intended receiver, and he was covered by Elijah Griffin. That's the thing about college football. Everybody talks about Alabama and Georgia, Clemson and Ohio State and Oklahoma, but college football is always much better when Texas and USC and Michigan are good. Wholeheartedly agree, partner. Second and ten. Young, no, make it Ellinger. Nice deception, and he'll pick up a first down. I mean, that was a great fake. You had two USC players that were actually totally tricked, and they're going to go with Young, and then Ellinger going to take it. Now he's going to get on the outside, and he finds a little bit of a crease up the field, and he's going to cut, get north and south, and do what he does best, which is be physical at the end of the run. His coaches want him to slide. And he won't listen to anybody <laughs> except one person, his mom. He gets down when she says, slide, so first and 10 of the 46. Ellinger to the sideline and complete. You know why I laugh? Why? You met him? He's a big dude. Does he seem like a guy no. that wants to slide? No, he doesn't. I mean, hyper-competitive. He seems like a guy that could play middle linebacker, to be honest with you. Yeah. Talking about his high school coach, Todd Dodge. I remember being in high school, Todd's, I think about 55. Being in high school and watching ABC, the game of the week, and when Texas would come on, they would say, don't forget to join us on Saturday. Texas, Todd Dodge, ready to take on Texas Tech. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 46. And a handoff to Watson this time. It's pretty clear that this quarter is going to be all about the offensive line. It's going to be all about the run game. It's going to be about the decision making for Sam Ellinger. Remember, this is a program now. Tom Herman in his 15 games is eight and seven overall. He's lost five games that they've held the lead in the fourth quarter. That's the most in the country over those 15 games. And so they've got to finish this at 37 14. You got to go out there with a sense of urgency and finish the game off. They're down at eight at the 44. Sam Ellinger looking for the first down, dancing in the pocket. Ellinger and will just wisely get rid of it. As he goes down, and that brings up fourth and eight. Pretty good stop there as Hunter Eccles was in the back field. He's a redshirt freshman, 6'5", 240. Getting a little run at that outside linebacker position because remember, Porter Gustin, a terrific senior, number 45, was ejected earlier in this half with the targeting foul. Ryan Wachewski, the punt for the third time. Tyler Vaughn is the deep man. SC almost getting there. And Vaughn running it. And he'll be downed inside the 10. 12, 20 to go, fourth quarter. 37-14, USC with the football right after this.
Welcome back to Texas. Will Farrell in attendance. The anchor man. <laughs> First down and ten at the eight yard line for USC. And they'll get it up to the 15. It's Michael Pittman. They got to get something going. Four of their last five drives have been three and out. And the only one that wasn't a three and out ended in that field goal attempt that was blocked and returned for a touchdown. So just nothing going so far. Got to find some rhythm for their freshman quarterback. Second and three at the 15. Daniels. First down. Trojans, Tyler Vaughn. What are you seeing with this USC team in all facets of the game? Oh, they can't run it. You know, that, that's a problem. They've rushed the ball 14 times for 13 yards in, in this game. You, you, you can't win. You know, when you got a true freshman quarterback, you got to help them out in some ways. The punt, punting unit gave short fields to Texas time after time, and they have not been able to run the football. First down, and it's caught. Tyler Petit. And we'll talk about runners. Just like Oklahoma, USC has had some of the greatest runners in the history of the game. Of football, Mike Garrett, O.J. Simpson, Charles White, Marcus Allen, Reggie Bush, just to name a few. Shoot, last year, 1,500 yards from Ronald Jones. He's a second-round draft pick. Second and two at the 27. Low snap handled by Daniels. He throws it underneath, and it's a first down. For Southern California, Trayvon Sidney. Shaking up a bit on that play. He gets up gingerly. You know, that was Daniel's 40th pass attempt. His numbers aren't going to look terrible. He had the interception, has not thrown the touchdown, but it's been all him. You know, that's that's tough for a veteran. You know, and I think Sam Darnold masked some of the inefficiencies of this team in the last couple of years, in particular, the inefficiencies up front. First down at the 32. Daniels in the middle, and it's caught. St. Brown got level. Somehow he managed to hold on to the ball, but wow. What a hit with his Texas defense. Foster, B.J. Foster, also a freshman, drilling. Oh, my goodness. I mean, B.J. Foster just laying the wood. 6'2", 210-pound true freshman. Is that going to be a targeting penalty, though? Is that the ball got knocked loose from the receiver, and when he recovered it, he was short of the line to gain. Okay. That plays under further review. E.J. Foster. Be taking a look at that line to gain. Needed to get Woo. to the 42 yard line. My goodness. Wow. Uh, if that is not targeting, then I don't know what targeting is, Joel. Uh, maybe the officials didn't see it, but looks like he almost took St. Brown's head off there. I don't disagree with you. Mouthpiece coming out for Amon Ra. Remember crown launch all the indicators certainly there. Mike Pereira joins us Michael. Well I'll tell you what to me this is a classic form of targeting remember it has nothing to do with being defenseless a runner is not defenseless. However you still cannot lead with the crown of your helmet and we talked about what a crown is earlier to me this is the type of play they're trying to get out of the game. And, and Mike, they announced that they were reviewing the line to gain because the ball, Amon Ra lost possession, then recovered it again. So they will be now reviewing both of these aspects, the potential targeting as well as the recovery after the ball was loose and where that recovery took place. Am I correct? Well, you're correct. But to me, the first thing they got to review is targeting because if it's targeting, it's going to be an automatic first down anyways. So if you're going to go into sequence, to me, that's where you would want to start. I think 
there's some confusion, Mike, between what the NFL has now implemented and what college has been. And in college, you talk about the defenseless player and so on and so forth. Can you clear up maybe the difference here and, and how this is different from the NFL in this particular instance? You remember, in college now, you have targeting 913. There's two parts of it. If a player is defenseless, so you're talking about a receiver in the act of making the catch, Hold a on, quarterback, Hold on, after or we'll hear Mike play, Defee. It's been determined that number 25 targeted the receiver. So number 25 has been disqualified. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the fumble. Automatic first down. So B.J. Foster has been ejected. Mike, you can continue your point now, please. So the first part of the rule, if you're a defenseless player, you're in the act of making the catch, that's one thing. But at no time against any opponent can a defender, in this case, lead with the crown of the helmet and make contact anywhere in the body, not just the helmet area. So this was a classic example of leading them with the crown of the helmet and clearly a targeting call. Yeah, and then obviously, like you said, first down follows with that penalty and now B.J. Foster who is a backup to Brandon Jones but B.J. Foster will be lost for the first half of the TCU game next week for the Texas Longhorns so important players on each of these rosters that will be out of the first half in next week's contest for USC it's Porter Gustin for the first half of Washington State on Friday night and B.J. Foster for TCU first down and 10 for USC at the 42 Daniels under pressure and Daniels is sacked Shooting the gap, Chris Brown, the sophomore from Houston. Well, he's going to come up from his safety position, and then he's just going to find the opening. See how they cover up all the linemen, and then the center and the guard do not communicate well. They're blocking one player. No one comes out and actually picks up the safety. Excellent design there from Todd Orlando. And, Joel, if you look at Texas against Maryland and against Tulsa, and then you compare it to what we've seen in this game tonight. It looks like two totally different teams. Yeah, and, and frankly, that's a, a bit of the rub when you're analyzing Texas as they play down and up to their comp competition constantly. You know, they're in a game late with Tulsa after they really should have been up way too much. They were in a game with Oklahoma, who was a playoff team last year. It, it, they beat West Virginia, a ranked team on the road, and then they would get into these really tough struggles with teams that they really should have dominated so tonight's been more the same although I will say this what we haven't seen generally from Texas is in matchups like this they jump out and they actually put their foot on their opponent and jump out to the big lead and start to kind of blow somebody out and you can see their confidence just growing in all phases of the game the defense has been playing well from the beginning. And that's just to update everyone. That's Devontae Davis over there getting attended to on the far side of the field. Trying to say second time Davis has been down. He's also down in the end zone in the first half. And this is not why he missed Tulsa. This looks like they're stretching out that right leg. He missed last week's game against Tulsa with neck soreness. He had some neck soreness during the week of practice. Looks like he's cramping up here. And he'll hobble off the field, try to walk it off. He's been really good tonight. 6-2-205 from Miami, Florida. Booker T. Now they need him because part of what can make this defense so good is the big physical corners on the outside. And I think that's the most important word you've used tonight. Texas looks physical. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And they need those guys in the Big 12. You know, when they face these teams, they're going to throw it all over the lot. They need those guys to be out there playing physical. Second down at 18 at midfield for SC. Daniels in the pocket. Sideline caught. And a flag on the play and the reception made by. Trayvon Sidney. Yeah, the flag is going to be because Sidney stepped out of bounds. He was not forced out of bounds, and then he was the first one to come back inbounds and then touch the ball. So he lost track of where he was on the field, stepped out, came back, and then caught the ball. And so this is going to go against USC. Illegal touching. 
offense number 13. He went out of bounds, came back in, and was the first to touch. It's a loss of down at the previous spot, third down. So watch Sydney. He just loses his. See how he's just kind of drifting, drifting, boom. There's the left foot out of bounds. Official. Anytime you see the official pull his hat off, that's what they're going to do. And you always obviously saw the official talking with the other officials with his hat off. So that'll make it third down and 18. JT Daniels off his back foot again, caught on the far side by St. Brown, but not enough for first down. He gains six on third and 18. And SC will punt it away. Just not the game plan that was going to come in here and be successful. Daniels now is 42nd pass attempt. Amon Ra, who has played great, St. Brown, eight catches, 161 yards, but no running game to speak of whatsoever. But Rovich sends it off. And it's fair call at the six yard line by Brandon Jones. Under nine minutes to go in the fourth. It's been a great night. Sam Ellinger put the biscuit in the basket. Brass blocked. Texas has it. Welcome back. First down and 10 at the six yard line for the Longhorns. Ellinger handing it off. Trey Watson picks up a first down. And I've, if you're an offensive lineman at Texas, you probably are coming into this week getting tired of hearing that we can't move anybody. Yeah, no doubt. And that you're the weak link of the offense or even the team for that matter. And they've come out here and absolutely done a sensational job. They've run the ball 40 times now right into the heart of that USC defense. They haven't been overly dominant as far as yards per rush, but they have run the ball for over 130 yards in this game and establish the dominance more importantly Gus in this second half and that's what has allowed them to retain the lead remember that's been their bugaboo under Tom Herman second down and one at the 15 and Watson leads forward looks like he picks up the first down this is what they've been waiting for yeah this kind of solid victory well Herman I've said it in the open as you take a look at the offense and their height and weight. Shackelford will be back for them. He's been week to week. He'll be back most likely next week. But Tom Herman needed that marquee win. He was close last year against USC. They were close against Oklahoma State. They were close against Oklahoma. They needed something definitely. I can't call the win against West Virginia, even though West Virginia was ranked a marquee win, because Will Greer broke his hand in that game and basically didn't play so this to me is going to be the first big win under Tom Herman if they're able to hold on and if they are able to hold on with 653 left leading 37 to 14 the biggest game is next week when TCU comes into town TCU losing to Ohio State at home or well, at Ohio State right now Second down and seven. Gallagher keeps it. John Houston stops him. 6-15 and counting. So the schedule for Texas is a tough one. SC tonight, TCU next week at home. Then they're at Kansas State, Red River the following week with Oklahoma. Doesn't get much easier after that. That's a tough road. At Oklahoma State, West Virginia before they finish it out. So this was a big one. I mean, they were desperate for this win. Gallagher, that one knocked away at the very end a J.D. Harris for SC. 
and some pressure on Ellinger for the first time in a while. Early in this game, we saw some pressure get to Ellinger and it forced him to throw some passes before he wanted to. On that play, Jay Tufele, Richard Freshman, got to him and I think it led to that Aaron pass. There's the schedule that you see. So difficult, really, through the first two months of the season. Longhorn send it off. Vaughns is the deep man. Starts from the 42. Gets a block and up the sideline. Getting inside Texas territory. 5-31 to play in the fourth. 37 to 14. Back after this. Let's go back to our expectation shattering drive of the game sponsored by Buick and it was that opening drive of the second half after the wild ending to the first half Texas came out took the second half kick and went right down the field and it culminated in that beautiful throw to the freshman Joshua Moore in the back of the end zone and Ellinger put it on the money Moore hauled it in and Texas has never looked back 37 to 14 the Longhorns complete domination especially in the second half first down and 10 at the 37 531 to play in the fourth here comes a blitz Daniels and he won't be able to get it to Stephen Carr under immense pressure I think the risk here is that for a young player and this can happen at any level but for a young player freshman in college a rookie in the NFL you can you run the risk of ruining some confidence you know JT Daniels is a confident kid but you run the risk of, of happy feet in the pocket and so on and so forth when you when you throw the ball this many times and he's under duress like he is and, and that's that's a dangerous thing moving forward for a young player Daniels lines up and delivers the first down as Vavis Jones comes up with the catch. Because I know it's picky, but even his, you know, some of the guys that he's worked with on an individual level will tell you, and I know him there in Southern California, they'll tell you that his footwork has gotten a little sloppy, in particular in this second half. You know, at the tail end of the drop back, you don't see a lot of a, a, a close step or a hitch step. What you see is shuffles backwards and then a throw off the back foot because there's been pressure in his face. It's not necessarily his fault, but that's the risk you run when you come into a game like this and you're throwing the ball 45 plus times. First and 10 of the 27. Dan is rolling out and he'll just dump it out of bounds. Is it, as a quarterback, Joel, is it like playing golf where you're, he's right handed and he wants to, when he delivers it, get over to his left side? Well, what you'd like to listen, as a quarterback, you've got to be able to use the torque in your body use your power your power source in order to develop velocity and create velocity on the football you just can't do that if you're throwing off your back foot not using that torque using all arm unless you've got an elite arm talent like an Aaron Rodgers that can throw the ball from any platform with great velocity and so you've got to be able to at least at some point stand in there plant your foot and use the torque to deliver an accurate pass second and ten they're standing right now for Daniels. Is, every time he catches, he drops back to throw the ball. He's under pressure. Anthony Wheeler with the tackle. Stephen Carr with the catch. Brecken Hager is a guy that is in that backfield quite a lot tonight. And on this drive, he's been back there flushing Daniels out of the pocket on almost every single drop back. The senior captain from right here in Austin has had a heck of a night. Third down and seven to the 24. And a timeout call by USC, their second. 4.13 to go, back to Austin after this. Biggest game during the Coach Herman era, would you say, Yeah, I, I would absolutely say that, with the marquee matchup that they have, and in particular with the way they started the season with that loss to Maryland. Third down and seven of the 24. And it's a movement up front. Looks like USC. Ball start. Offense. 
number 76. Five yard penalty, third down. Well, they've just been really poor on third down, and it didn't start that way. USC was six of seven to start this game on third down, and since that point, they are 0 of seven. So they have just not found the recipe. Early it was getting the ball to Amon Ross St. Brown across the middle, but those were on more manageable situations. This type of third and long, I fully expect Todd, Todd Orlando to create some sort of pressure and try to get to JT Daniels. Third down at 12 of the 29. Daniels delivers Vaughn's and he's stacked up and driven backwards. Well done. This time it's Anthony Cook, the freshman from Houston, Lamar High School. I think you got to keep your guys out there. I mean, technically, it's a three possession game. So if you can get some sort of quick score right away, I mean, there is hope here, but the Trojans in danger of losing back to back games by double digits for the first time since all the way back in 2000, which was the Paul Hackett regime the year before Pete Carroll came to Troy. Fourth down and eight. Daniels. Daniels has it knocked out of his hands and he's sacked. SC turns it over on downs. Omenahu getting into the backfield. This is just straight determination on the pass rush on the outside from Charles Omenahu, the senior. Check him out. He's just going to be coming straight up the field. And then he's going to get the arm. You see how he's still connected to the tackle, Clayton Bradley, but he gets his arm out there, the left arm, and gets after JT Daniels and pulls that ball free on the second effort. What a great job by this front seven for Texas. They not only have stopped the run, completely stifled the run for USC, but they've created pressure on the freshman quarterback. That's exactly what the coaches wanted to do. Speed up his clock, dominate with their front seven, and they've been able to do that. So Texas takes over with a 37 to 14 lead at their own 35, 324 to play. Young, they look at that pile moving forward. Offensive line for Texas firing off. Calvin Anderson, Patrick Vahe, Elijah Rodriguez, Kerstetter, Samuel Cosme, all playing to really solid ball up front I, and I'd like to chime in here because I think there's going to be a lot of there's always the the jump to conclusion that now we win the national championship yeah, Texas is back and all you know it, listen this was a great first step Texas is on the process of taking many steps back to being Texas and this is one of those and it's an important one as they keep it on the ground with Daniel Young but this doesn't mean you're going to win the Big 12, right? I mean, that could be the case, Gus. You, you don't know, but it is a process. And I think at times, wouldn't you agree, partner, that that's been lost here? Is that they want to be back right away. They want that immediate, we're back in 2005 watching Vince Young run around. And it's just going to take some time. Remember, since Colt McCoy walked off that field at the Rose Bowl with the injury, this program is basically 500. In fact, if you do the data throughout college football, they'd be ranked 62nd in the country in their record since that loss to Alabama in the national championship game. So the hole is a little deeper and darker than you wanted to climb yourself out of, but this is an important step. Daniel Young, first down, Texas. I'm, I'm impressed, though. I will tell you. I'm impressed, too. That old line blocks like this, they're going to win a lot of football games. And what I'm impressed with more than anything, how physical. Even the receivers are physical. Johnson and little Jordan, 6'5", 6'6". Andrew Beck, the tight end, very physical tonight. He's 6'4", 260. The yeah. offensive lineman giving these back some opportunities. I go around the field, you know, before the game, I go down and, and try to get a last conversation with some of the coaches, and I talk to the NFL scouts a lot down there who are watching warm-ups. As Young runs it again. And one of the scouts, it was a group of them. You know, they all kind of stand together, and I'm talking with these guys, and I see them all over the country uh, scouting all these great players. And one of the guys was like, man, Save for Tuscaloosa, this is like the pregame national champions. <laughs> yeah, and they passed the eye test. Yeah, exactly. And 
That's what's frustrating for their fan base when they lose games like Maryland. And this will be win number 900 for Texas. Ironically, win number 800 came versus USC 2 back in that 2006 Rose Bowl. Sam Ellinger popping his collar now. Victory formation for the Longhorns. Tom Herman, he's Mensa. He's mice and men. He may know what he's talking about. We will see, especially next week. 37 to 14. Texas defeats USC. Different story, though, going back to Los Angeles for Coach Ellen. It's going to be a frustrating, frustrating locker room. The chances that they had, the opportunities that they missed, and the frustration of not being able to run the football and provide any semblance of really support for their true freshman quarterback offensively after the first few series. Let's go downstairs to.